What's going on, everybody? RJ Ochoa here from SB Nations, bloggingtheboys.com. Welcome to our round seven live stream here for the 2021 NFL Draft. Things are uh, very exciting, obviously, with the Dallas Cowboys. They just took a safety uh, with their sixth round pick, their second sixth round pick, Israel Mukuwama. Uh, apparently, in speaking with the local media already, is, quote, not sure what position he is going to play for the Dallas Cowboys. Is he going to be a safety? Is he going to be a corner? I don't know, but I'm very excited to find out. I'm also very excited to find out who the Dallas Cowboys are going to take in the seventh round here. The first pick, only pick, the last pick of the class, 238 overall for the Dallas Cowboys. Let's take a look here. Who do you want the Dallas Cowboys to take? Let's take a look at the best available player. Our Darius Washington, our guy, is still on the board, uh, overall uh, board in terms of best available players. We have options here. Marvin Wilson is available. We've been talking about him for a long time. Dylan Moses is available. Obviously been talking about him. And yes, our Darius Washington still available. The Dallas Cowboys uh, still could walk away with a safety. They could walk away with a third defensive tackle. They could walk away with a third linebacker. We have seen them now. If Israel Mukuamu plays corner, the Cowboys will have three corners. They could have three defensive tackles. They have three linebackers. Do we think, in fact, let's answer this question right now. One, two, three, go. Do the Dallas Cowboys draft one of Marvin Wilson, Dylan Moses, or Ardarius Washington? Yes or no? Are the Cowboys taking one of those three players in your mind? Because I think the possibility is high. This was a bit of a surprise pick. I think we all like the pick. Uh, let's see. We've got uh, I'm the Maz, I'm the man says yes. C pool 15 says no. Um, it's definitely uh, difficult to peg. As we, uh, man, see, just, you know, we're all trying to calm down. We're trying to get through this here. Um, Orlando says Dallas does not take who the fans want. Um, oh, Redbirds Junkie says my guess is Coyote Osika. That's a great guess, too. Um, if the Cowboys do ultimately take another guard, which wouldn't, or well, they don't, not another guard, if they take a guard. Um, we have been waiting, obviously, to see the Cowboys take a guard. That has not happened yet so far. They do have a tackle. The Cowboys have made 10 picks, two of them on the offensive side of the ball. They have a tackle who they took in the fourth round, 138 overall in Josh Ball. They took a wide receiver after that at 179 in round five. Simi, uh, goodness gracious, Simi Fajoko out of Stanford. This is... um. This is it. The Dallas Cowboys people are on the clock. Get ready. Hold on. Let's make it through this together. All right. Who is it going to be? Who's it going to be? Who are the Dallas Cowboys going to take? Let's hurry up. Come on. Who's it going to be? Let's get our predictions in. The Cowboys are on the clock. Final pick in the 2021 NFL draft for the Dallas Cowboys. Cowboys, what are they going to do? What are they going to take? Put uh, put the money on my mind. Oh, <laughs> yeah, why meme says our Darius. Uh, put the money in my hand, says safety or guard. Uh, Robert says quarterback. This could be a quarterback, obviously. Jonathan says, I just watched uh, highlights of Israel. Uh, he's got good hands. Great. Good point here. Well, this is not about Israel. Who is this going to be here, people? We're finding out soon enough who the Dallas Cowboys are taking with their final selection in the 2021 NFL draft. Uh, nothing yet on Twitter. Nothing, nothing, nothing. We're waiting, waiting, waiting. Um, some people saying David Moore, DB safety. Lots. There's a lot of options, a lot of directions the Cowboys can go in here. Uh, no, the Broncos took Kerry Vincent Jr., the corner from LSU. Um, uh, screw it, Ardarius. You know what? This is the pick where you prior. This is your last pick. Prioritize the guy that you do not want to lose an undrafted free agency. This is the guy you don't want to have to compete against other teams for. And considering, I mean, you did kind of draft a safety, I suppose, with Israel, but. I mean, get yourself a safety. I know he doesn't have the height that you want, Dan Quinn, but go ahead, get somebody that can shine for you. Show us, Dan Quinn, that you really are something special. Come on, Twitter. Let's go. Uh, no, that's the Broncos pick. I got all excited for it. This is the seventh round. This is where legends are born. Uh, we're waiting, waiting, waiting. We've got now um, – I'm the man says I want Washington probably take Moses. If they take Dylan Moses, I mean, that's a great pick too. Um here we go, here we go, here we go, here we go. Come on, Cowboys, let's go, let's go, let's go. 11th, this is the 11th player the Cowboys are drafting. They did not draft up a single time or trade up a single time, excuse me. Uh, we thought they might. We thought it was possible. Uh, waiting, come on, what is going to happen? Oh, a video of Sam Elgin getting the call from the Colts just came out. That's hilarious. Who are the Cowboys going to take with the seventh, their final pick in the seventh round, 238th overall? Uh, the pick is in, according to the NFL Network broadcast. Let's go ahead and get on with it then. Who is the pick? But it is in for the Dallas Cowboys. We're waiting, 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 waiting. Waiting, waiting, waiting. Building anticipation. Come on, people. Who are the Dallas Cowboys taking? Who are you seeing? Who are you seeing? 
Who are you seeing? Let's go. If you've got it, let us know in the comments. We're, we're waiting. We're waiting to explode, depending on who this pick is. I've never felt this much energy in my life. Come on, Cowboys. Come on. Our Darius Washington, our Darius Washington. Come on. You can do it. We believe in you. Uh, the pick is in. That's all the NFL Network is telling us. Now would be a good time to tell us who the player is, NFL Network. Um, checking Twitter, nothing yet. Um, checking. Come on. We're, who's going to be first? Who's going to be the one? Who's going to be the one to tell us? who the Dallas Cowboys are selecting with the 238th overall pick in the 2021 NFL draft. Come on, NFL Network, Twitter, who's it going to be? Uh, who's it going to be? Who's it going to Man, this, how is this possible? I feel like we're stuck in time. Remember that movie Clock Stoppers where the dude had like a watch and he would just pause time? I feel like we're stuck in this moment, um, and I don't know how to get out of it, honestly. Who have the Dallas Cowboys taken with the 230th overall pick? A lot of you think it's a quarterback. I just, um, I don't know um we're at commercials how is this possible that we are at commercials in this moment where the dallas cowboys are now not even on the clock where the pick is in uh the dallas cowboys all right matt farniak an offensive guard the cowboys took a guard ben the first one in uh with the name matt farniak let's go ahead and pull up uh some information on matt uh goodness gracious that was a really stressful run right there for the Cowboys, they did address guard. Finally, um, he is looking at uh, looking at, at Dane's um, at Dane's draft guy. He has him as a tackle, the 29th overall tackle out of Nebraska. Uh, Dane has him graded as a priority free agent, so not as a draft pick. Um, okay, th this is not bad. If you're getting a guard, if you're getting, we talked about this for a long time, and the Cowboys did not get Trey Smith, so it is what it is. But they needed a guard they needed a guard option they needed a guard body and is this a player who's going to come in right away and help is he going to help ever at all maybe throughout the course of his career probably not this is a seventh round pick but as marlon mayfield says this makes sense the dallas cowboys needed a guard um they needed help along the interior because they don't have bodies we've been talking about this for a long time let's go ahead and get our invitation out by the way to dave sturchio who's going to be joining us to talk about this pick our invitation is now sent sturch will be on his way rather shortly uh let me let him know that his invitation is on the way uh just sent uh he should be joining us very soon so the cowboys have a guard um okay um not a bad it's a seventh round pick it's a seventh round pick. And that's the important thing to know that this is a seventh round pick for the Dallas Cowboys. And this is, you know, they threw a dart a moment ago. All right. They threw a dart. This is not, not laying up, but this is being smart. This is playing it safe. Um, so let's go ahead and get the thoughts of one Dave Sturgeo Sturge, Matt Farnyak, your thoughts. Uh, it was a need. It was an absolute need. You know, you, you got to address the offensive line just a little more. Um, I'm excited about it, especially in the seventh round. You, this is, this is absolutely what you do. Um, you take the flyer, you take depth, you take the, it's, it's not, I wouldn't even call it a safe pick. I would just say this is something that they needed to do. I said it, you know, from jump street, if you're going to go heavy defense, which they obviously did and rightfully so, but if you're going to go offense at all, you can take a splash on the, you know, the receiver front, but you also want to make sure you get the beef up front. And I think that, I think they did that. So again, the, you know, I think people have these high expectations of picks and they say like, oh, you know, this guy's never going to make the team. Yeah. I mean, this it's the seventh round right. and and they they made 11 picks and three of them were on offense. And of the two, of the three that were on offense, two were along the offensive line. I think by all measurements here, they have satisfied everything that we have asked of them. Absolutely. They've, they've literally addressed again. This is day three really makes me feel a lot better about day two. You know what I mean? Day three, they crushed this. They, they, like, they absolutely crushed this. They addressed the positions of need. They rebounded from pretty much everything they did. I want to say did wrong yesterday, but just kind of the, the picks that rubbed us the wrong way when we were just like, okay, who's that? Who's that? I, there's other guys on the board. They took a lot of good, good risk today, and, and I think that it's going to pay off. At first, uh, your first assumption, does Matt Farniak make this team? No. I, I mean, don't, and that, I, but that's okay. Reaction. Like, yeah. would you, would you, would you rather see uh, a huge roll of dice here? Because I, uh, I think this is this is play it safe. This is go get somebody who may or may not work out. We didn't. This is this literally kind of feels like we didn't take a guard. Let's take a guard and hope we hit the lottery here. Yeah, I mean, look, this could this could play out. You know, obviously, you know, you'll get all the the measurables and and his uh, his film and stuff like that, and you can start looking into it, and he can be like, oh, he's a, he's a hoss. You know, he's he's going to be the guy. You know. Uh, right now, I think they have great depth on their offensive line. 
I think, but this was this was the safe pick to do. I mean, do you really want to draft a quarterback at this point? Do you really want to? What else do you need? I mean, yes. Did I want Washington? I was pounding my my desk here for Washington, um, and that doesn't happen. But you know what? I mean, how many picks I left? You would assume that he gets drafted, uh, but uh, the way I see it, maybe it's a bidding thing. Come Washington, if they really want to address that with the on you know the free agency period. So let's look at the whole class as a whole, or rather, before we do, um, I could. I could kind of see him making the team um, just in the sense that there are not a lot of guards on the team. Very right? true. Like, yeah. There, there are not a lot. And he wasn't um, listed as a tackle, right? He was listed as a he, guard. No, he was listed as a tackle. And so oh, he was okay. That, that flexibility works for him, obviously. Yeah. Um, but l- the competition there, I mean, like who, who believes in Connor McGovern to a, a large degree right now? I'm a big I was me personally. I love Connor McGovern. <laughs> I think I think I think he's going to be a role player and I think he gives um you know fits he's going to he's going to give some fits as far as like some position battle. Obviously not Zach Martin, but you never know. You know not with Zach Martin, the other side. You know what I mean with Connor Williams. I I think that's a, a that's a logical uh competition. I do. Um so I get, you know, again, this is a very, very we'll see, you know, and I think T- Catalina hit that before. He's like, it's very we'll see. But again, what else were you going to take? You know what I mean? At this point, you've addressed your corners. You've addressed the safety. You've addressed the linebackers wholeheartedly. You've addressed everything that we've asked you to do, despite a couple of the picks that were like, eh, we could have went another way. But I think they addressed the positions just like we drew it up. You know, 80%, what was it, 11 picks and and two three offensive players. So you do the math. I'm not a quick mathematician, but that's a, that's a good defensive draft. And at the end, you want to, you want to draft for, uh, for a little depth and a little competition in the summer. So let's take a look at Matt specifically for a moment here. Um, six, five, three, 11. I mean, this is, this that's is the big se- boy. <laughs> this is the seventh round though. I mean, you know, so John B. Jones says you could have taken Marvin Wilson as a flyer. They might still walk away with Marvin Wilson. I, I mean, we're talking right now. I don't see uh, that he is gone, but they might still walk away with him when this is all said and done. They clearly felt like it was important to take a guard, and they got one. Yeah, and they got a big one. You know what I mean? Like six five, another big guy. Like we're talk. We keep talking about length for these DBs that they're coming up with, but I mean, another big, big boy uh, on this offensive line. And, and look. Let's be honest. When you look at guys like this, a seventh round draft pick who's going to obviously enter camp, you know, God willing, some kind of injury off the field or something like that. You have him on, in camp and he's going to be one of those guys like that you have to practice against. That That's not going to be some easy feat, some pushover guy on the practice squad or, or on or runs with the threes. And he has to deal with some of the D tackles that we drafted this year. So there's going to be a lot of competition. I think competition creates a lot of opportunity and also creates, you know, it, it kind of separates the men from the boys, uh, you know, in the summer. Sturge, let's look at the whole draft class now. Yeah. Um, it's it's done. It's set. If We're all done. If you're watching, uh, take a screenshot. It's beautiful. This is work of art, clearly, in the minds of many. Um, let's go your top three favorite picks that were not Micah Parsons. Okay. Okay. My top three favorite picks, obviously, number one, this is, I, I, this is going to sound ridiculous, but number one, a next to Parsons is Jabril Cox. I, I know this is going to sound ridiculous, but they landed a monster in LSU's linebacker. They, this kid is going to be something special. I do like see me. I do. I think that's going to create a lot of competition around the wide receiver position, considering the fact that Michael Gallup's on a contract year, considering the fact that this might spark a Noah Brown or a Cedric Wilson to really, really step it up. I like that pick as well. And I guess I'm going to be, you know, we wanted a corner originally. So get Kelvin Joseph in there. He's a dog. He's he's, uh, he's a guy that's going to come in there day one and, and work his tail off to, to make this team. So if you're asking me for the top three, those are my top three outside of Parsons. Who are your bottom three? Bottom three. Well, uh, just because of the storm that hit Twitter uh, when we drafted Josh Ball, um, you know, I was one of them. I said, well, you know, maybe it's maybe it's not so big a deal. And then I read articles. And I was like, OK, this could be a big deal. Uh, and, and I, you know, I don't like to backtrack or delete tweets or one of those guys. I'm not that guy. But, uh, you know, the Josh Ball thing kind of scares me with all the stuff. So, look, if he could block and he's one of those guys that turn out to be a better person down the road. Great. You know, but I'm not a fan of. The, that pick in particular, definitely not a big fan of uh, Nashawn Wright. Uh, I think we could have got him where we drafted Israel, <laughs> to be honest with you. Um, we we get him there. He's lanky. He's one of those guys that fit the mold 
with uh, Dan Quinn. I'm ex- I'm excited about Dan Quinn. Uh, and I guess, uh, you know, I, I do like the Osa pick. Um, Chauncey Golston, I guess. We we kind of pick- – we didn't pick on him, but we discussed it last night that there was other things, definitely other players available when we drafted Chauncey. Uh, I don't – like I said, don't dislike the person. I dislike the value at that point uh, for 84. So I guess those are my bottom three. So um, if you had – let's I, – I think for me, um, my top three picks – Micah Parsons. And I know I said not Micah Parsons. Yeah, wait a minute. Um, I know. <laughs> um, Jabril Cox. I might I might go. I, I'm I feel better about the Osa Digizua pick after the Quentin Bohana pick. Yeah. Um, and so I might be convinced to go that direction. Simi Fahoko, I think, is a popular name and will be because he's a wide receiver and people look at that. Mm-hmm. I, I think I'm, I'm super impressed that the Cowboys trusted Dan Quinn. And that might, you know, blow up in their face. But they did that. And I, that's something that I have wanted to see as a real, from a, for a really, really, really long time is, is this commitment to something. Yeah. And because with, with Chris Richard, they were kind of like half in. Like he was kind of half in charge, half not in charge. And I like that they are now fully all in on whoever is running their defense in this particular instance, it's Dan Quinn. Yeah, I think this is 100%. Look, I was telling my my dad at lunch today, I was like, I think Dan Quinn ha- has the proverbial gun to the head of, of the Joneses and everybody like, look, you're going to make these picks because this is what I need to make this defense as good as it possibly is. And let's be honest, the Dallas Cowboys don't have to be a top 10 defense to make a run. They have to be in the middle of the pack. Give me 15, give me 16 total defense. And I think what based off of what they did, based off of the free agency, based off of who they brought back, I think this Dallas Cowboys defense has a really good shot to be middle of the pack. And that's all you need when you have the firepower on the offense with Dak coming back. And you, everybody knows the story and they know the roster. You know, I, I truly believe that with Dan Quinn's heavy influence, they got a lot of lanky guys. They got a lot of ball hawks, a lot of guys that can get up and get the ball. You know, pass breakups are almost just important as interceptions in, in some cases. And I think that the Cowboys addressed a lot. I was excited to see a safety, sort of, Israel. You know, I, like, I guess we could say sort of. But I was excited to see that uh, at the very end. That that showed you that, look, it went Jabril Cox, right? And we're like, okay, this is perfect. Dan Quinn still in charge. Then it went Josh Ball and then uh, Simi Fajoko. And you're like, all right, they're going to start doing best player available. But then the next two is Quentin Bahana and Israel. And it's like, guess what? Dan Quinn still in the building, still checked into this, and he's making sure he's still putting the best players on the field. I think, uh, listen, I'm optimistic. Yeah, I think, you know, um, I I really am surprised. Rob Phillips just tweeted about this, that the Cowboys, and if you're watching, let's go your answer, yes or no, and I'll, I'll just ask you the question, Starch. Are you surprised that the Cowboys did not trade up at all? They made 11 picks. Well, that's, I mean, I don't, uh, I don't think they're going to trade back out to make a twelfth, but the draft still is technically going on. But they, they picked eleven times. My, my biggest like reach, I guess, of a, of a prediction was that Dallas was going to be aggressive, and by aggressive, I didn't mean eleven picks. I meant taking a couple of those picks, trading up, getting you know better players either in the late first round or either even early second round. They did not do that. Basically, they said, Quinn, here's your picks. We're not trading any. We're going to get the best guy on your board at our time. You know, the only thing they did was gain a third rounder based off the trade they made with Philly. It turns out to be, you know, not the player that everybody was going crazy about, but again, defense, you know what I mean? So this is, this is basically Jerry Jones giving Dan Quinn and and same thing with Mike McCarthy, the entire staff. I know there was a lot of heat that went on Will McClay in in second in, in day two, but to me, this is this is redemption. This is redemption for him, you know, like because I think it was you who were breaking it down, you know, 25% here, 25% there, and then you're like, you're blaming him. But you got to give him credit now because day three, this entire staff, they they really did well. Redemption? I mean, like, I, I'm well, not... Redemption, I, I, not, I guess it's hard to say redemption because we haven't seen any of these guys, but I think, like, the Jabril Cox pick was heavy because we got the tape and we got the scouting and we got, you know what I mean? Like some of these players that they traded, uh, not traded, uh, drafted later on in the draft, you got to assume that they got decent tape because of McClay. I suppose. I mean, I think all in all, it, it was a very different draft from last year in oh, that yeah. it, it it was focused on something very particular and very specific in terms of the things that they wanted. Um, last year's draft was all about value. And so... I mean, I I guess 
I mean, I'm I'm impressed in one sense, but I'm also I'm also curious. Uh, by the way, we do have the information now on Matt Farniak. Um, you know, there's there's nothing to be upset about here. I mean, if this if this is your seventh round pick, I mean, it it could go a lot worse for you overall. Um, Twenty eight bench press. I mean, that's again for me who is an avid lifter. You know, when I can pump out like twelve, like twelve, thirteen clean, I feel like a punter. And then this guy does double that. I'm like, all right, he's pretty strong. <laughs> right. right. Um, so Marlon Mayfield has a comment says it, it, it at least makes sense now. And I think when you look at the class as a whole, there clearly was a plan. And and whether that ends up working out remains to be seen. But they. They had they had wants, wishes, and whatever, and they got it. And, and now we just have to kind of, you know, see if they were right. You know what I mean? Yeah. No, absolutely. It's all a, a good look. The entire draft, let's be honest, the entire draft is a crapshoot. You know, you never know who's going to pan out. Uh, I, you know, to me, like looking at the first round in general, you know, you could say that I think the Giants got the better receiver out of the Giants and the Eagles. I do. I think Tony is better than than Devonta Smith. That's just me. But like you just don't know, know. There's there's so much tape you can study and so many performances on big stages. That's great. But how much does this translate to the NFL game? So we'll find out. I think again, is this the hall that you would say was on your mock drafts? Probably not. I can't see anybody either on blogging the boys or anywhere that could say that this this draft and the way it played out was the way they mocked it. There's no way. Um, I agree with that. Um, Michael Tuttle says 11 players. I bet about seven of them will even make the final roster. Let's, let's go off that number. Who are the first four out? If, if you go off of seven, I think, I think Matt Farniak's the first out and then give me three more. I want to say Farniak. Uh, I want to say Chauncey Golston. I know it's going to hurt, you know, based off the, uh, based off the, uh, the draft pick, but based off the depth, you know, you take them in the third round, you expect them to make the team. And that's what I've been telling a lot of people. Like you can't, like you can't take sh- chances in the third round. You got to get your guys in the third round. So maybe Chauncey, Matt Farniak, and boy, I mean, I'm, I'm Osa. Maybe I don't know. I, I think defensive tackle is a definite need. So maybe Josh Ball. I don't know. Uh, I mean, they drafted him for a reason. So that th- I think that's a good problem to have. Maybe uh, uh, Nashawn Wright. Maybe him too. But I think that's a good problem to have. If you can look up at the, these eleven picks and have trouble taking four away. Then, then I guess they did okay after all. Um, so Celos says we got three solid picks out of eleven. Darn Ooh. shame. So Celos, man. <laughs> well, okay, but even if that's true, I think that's really great. Like if if you're if you're landing three solid guys, like if that's how you want to qualify this, like th- you're not like never. You're, this isn't the 1975 Dirty Dozen. Like think think about it as as recent as five years ago. We were sitting there saying, oh, the Cowboys might have just pulled off a draft class to challenge the, the Dirty Dozen of 1975. They took uh, Ezekiel Elliott. They took Jalen Smith. They took Malik Collins. They took um, uh, Charles Tapper, Dak Prescott. Obviously, they took, at the time, three third-round picks uh, or four third-round picks. Uh, Kayvon Frazier, Rico Gallus, Anthony Brown, and uh, Darius. Um, You're a machine. Uh, gosh. Uh, <laughs> Darius. Uh, it's right. It's Alma. Um, no, oh my gosh, I slip in my mind. Darius Jackson, thank Jackson, you very much. Uh, Jackson, Darius Jackson. With I mean, we we all thought that that draft class was going to be amazing, and and it wasn't. Like you look at it, even just five years, it, like a year after that, it was like, oh my gosh, that you know that draft is going to be awesome. Dak, Dak and Zeke, <laughs> but even Zeke, like it's it's a, it's a running back, like right, like that's something you have to you have to qualify and couch that with, and so it really might just be Dak. Um, and so did I say Anthony Brown? I might have forgotten Anthony Brown. Uh, but uh, I mean, still, if you walk away from this uh, with three starter, Lynn Snell says if you can land three starters out of any draft, it's good. Uh, Joe Hart says five impact players. And I think if you're if you're challenging me to come up with five impact players in 2021, Micah Parsons, Kelvin Joseph, Jabril Cox, that's three, um, maybe Simi Fahoko in some capacity. I think Quinton Bohana is up there as well. And then maybe maybe N- Nashawn Wright, if if Dan I Quinn is Israel. Really this genius. Um now Orlando says, how many day one starters do we draft here? I think two. But but like if you you can't expect more than that. You can't. Like Michael Parsons is a day one starter and Kelvin Joseph is a day one starter. Outside of that, I mean, everybody else is rotational for now because they're rookies. Right. Yeah. I mean, look, yeah, I'm looking up and down this. And I, again, 
excited to see what Fajoko does. You know, he's a receiver, so of course he's going to get a lot of attention, and that's just the way it is. That's just the way the media works. They give attention to the skilled players over everybody else. You might not talk too much about a Quinton Bahana, you know, but again, defensive tackle was a thousand percent a need. You know, they did good addressing the positional needs. I think day one, you have Parsons and Joseph that are in that starting lineup, but Jabril Cox, uh, you know, when I say Kelvin Joseph, I mean probably cornerback three. You know, like he's on the field a lot, um, maybe even the fourth. I don't know. It depends on how you spin it. But I, I love Jabril Cox to come in there with Parsons. And if this doesn't light a spark or a fire under the butt of Jalen Smith, man, I don't know what else will. But this is this is probably, you know, he, he's got to be at home right now watching this or whatever he's doing and saying, huh, OK, time to pick it up. You know, because look, I know you got the contract and I know the Joneses and the Cowboys, they tend to cater to these bigger contracts and saying like, you know, they're, they're homegrown. They're, they're staying here. We get it. But again, this has to, has to wake this guy up. It has to. So I'm going to say something. And those watching, uh, those of us, th those of you that are here with us on YouTube, on Facebook, on, on Twitter, um, I want to know um, if you agree um, with me, what I'm about to say. Here we go. I don't. I don't think Jalen is at all concerned about his job. I I don't I don't think that like I don't think he feels threatened at all. I think Jalen Smith's like hell yeah they drafted Micah Parsons to to back me up you know cool man they oh they drafted Jabril Cox for when I need a breather or, or he views it as like oh that's a latent issue you know like they're they're not going to pick up his fifth year option uh so like it's I I'm good I'm still here swipe like I don't I truly don't swipe. believe that that Jalen <laughs> feels threatened. In any way, I do believe that Leighton Vanderish feels threatened because his 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 money is the one that's on the line. We'll see on Monday um, if if they pick up his fifth year option. Uh, and Michael Tuttle says LMAO uh, Parsons a backup. That's funny, but yeah, I mean it. That's and that's like Cade brings up a great point. Jalen acts like it's all good even when he's failing. Like Jalen would be the one that would come like. Can't you just see like a training camp press conference like the day after Micah Parsons ran with the ones and Jalen would come into his press conference be like, yeah, you know, uh, we're all starters, you know, like, you know, like, like, he, like he would have some sort watch, of like the film. <laughs> right. He would have some sort of like spin um, on that that would really kind of make it silly. Uh, so I don't at all think that he feels threatened by what has happened over the course of the last few days. Oh, my goodness. I mean, uh, again, I only I only get disappointed with Jalen Smith because of his exit the way he left this year. Watch the film. And we're like, you don't want us to do that. <laughs> you don't want us to do that. You know what I mean? And we did that. And that's why we drafted all these guys in the last three days. That's why we watched the film and we said Parsons is our guy. We watched the film and we got Jabril Cox. So whether or not he's, you know, walking around swagger, looking as dapper as usual, you know, and looking his, you know, beautiful self, I just Again, it's one of those things that if you're a professional, if you're a professional football player in the NFL on the Dallas Cowboys, the pressure will always be greater in Dallas. And I really hope that Dan Quinn, this is this is a call to action for Dan Quinn. If he's coming in here and he got his way with a lot of these draft picks and he's gotten his guys from Atlanta and he's gotten, you know, decent depth wherever he needs depth. I would hope that there's an open competition. I know it's going to sound ridiculous when you're paying. I guess that's why it's hard to think about that because when you're paying these guys the money you're paying them, it's hard to think that there's going to be any kind of competition. That's like saying Tony Pollard's going to get more carries next year than Zeke Elliott. That's not right. going to happen. You know, it's not going to happen regardless of the start. I don't know. know. Like, that, that's like – I. I'm not saying that's going to happen, but like that is more possible than a lot of other things to me. You um, think so? I mean, I don't know. I mean, after like, ninety something million dollars, you know, in that contract, it's like I, I don't know, man. I think Mike McCarthy. My, this is my own personal opinion. I think mm -hmm. Mike McCarthy showed up and in his like analytics god sense and said, "You guys gave ninety million dollars to a running back." Um, <laughs> but uh, sports guru, I think, brings up a great point. Jalen is just an overly positive person to where he's not realistic. Like we all know somebody like that. Um, like. I, I had I've referenced how I met your mother a lot. Um, like I have a buddy who just like I don't know if you've seen that show Sturge, but like yes, this, yes, the, yes. The, the finale was terrible. And I have a buddy that like he's like, No, it was so good. You just don't get it. You know what I mean? It's like, dude, it's okay. Like you can you can admit the truth. Like you don't like, have to Yeah, like I'm know. the I'm the one guy who went and saw the Entourage movie. You know what I'm saying? Dude, <laughs> I love the Entourage movie. I love it too. Uh, but uh, John, not a lot of John, people did. <laughs> <laughs> John B. Jones mentions, uh, can all four not play together successfully? Talking now about Micah Parsons, Jabril Cox, Leighton Vanderish, and Jalen Smith. And to answer that question, Sturge, you brought up 
the financial side of football. And so, no, they can't uh, because like soon enough, the cow, like Monday, the Cowboys have to make a financial decision after they spent two picks in the top 115 selections on linebackers. Like, right. so, so they can't, I mean, the, the Cowboys cannot have, think they now have two first round linebackers, a second round linebacker and a fourth round linebacker. that was a two, three round grade prospect. Um, so no, I mean, they, they cannot all coexist in that sense, uh, which is unfortunate, but it is what it is. Joe Hart, by the way, loved on trust as well. Appreciate it, Joe. <laughs> Thanks, uh, Joe. Wise. uh, but, uh, what do you actually, uh, Sturge, a lot of people have brought this up. Robert comments here, play Jabril Cox at safety. I a hundred percent disagree with this idea, but no, I'm curious no, for no, your no, thoughts. No, don't do that. No, no, no. You leave Jabril Cox right where he is. If anything at all, this puts Neil back at safety more. You know what I mean? Like I know the experiment was something that we all like coveted. We're like, Oh, this is exciting. We can, he can play everything. You know, he can move down and t cover the tight end, do the curl route, you know, all that good stuff. But now you've addressed it in the draft. You can have Neil play his normal position and not have an experiment in 2021. Is it, do, does that mean he won't do it? Uh, no, nobody knows. We're not in the coach's room. You know what I mean? But again, this, if, if he still starts in the linebacker room, great, but this gives you the flexibility to go back to your original plan. Like you want to, you sign Ke uh, Keanu O'Neill to play safety. You only said that he would play linebacker because we don't have Micah Parsons and we don't have Jabril Cox. So now you can go back and be like, well, you know, he is a safety, <laughs> you know, so there's your safety for the year. You don't have to worry so much about safety anymore. Neil's going to go back and play home. So we'll see. Um, overall, I think this was a prosperous day specifically day three for the Dallas Cowboys, uh, Jabril Cox as the headliner really goes a long way. The only pick they made today that is, you know, that, that, that is, was, and still continues to be met with consternation. You mentioned it was the Josh ball selection yeah. and that, you know, we, we talked, we had KT Turner on, um, to, to discuss that pick and the Cowboys talked about a culture change. And this is, you know, all of these red flags are different, but it is at the very least it's hypocritical uh, that they would say, we want to change our culture, et cetera. We're focused on it, blah, blah, that they would draft Micah Parsons, that they would draft Kelvin Joseph, that they would draft Josh Ball. Those, those draft selections don't line up, but they're, they're, you can't, they're talking out of both sides of their mouth in that particular idea. Well, what if that was the culture change that they want? You know, what if they want the dog mentality and the guys that are going to stir you up and get people pissed off? You know, like, remember, if, if we're if we're talking nostalgia, if you go back to the 90s Cowboys when they were the most successful, they had a couple guys that were chirp, chirp, chirp. You know what I mean? Like guys that were frowned upon in the league. You're Charles Haley's of the world. You know, Dion was a cowboy. He was one of the biggest trash talkers of all time. You know, the most outlandish. He reminds me of a, of, of you know, walking in the halls like a Jalen with talent. <laughs> but I'm just, that's too much. But uh, I'm just saying, overall, I think that the culture change, you know, thought, might be a little different than what we all perceived, you know, like, are we, listen, we're not in the business to draft pieces, uh, you know, not good people, you know, we're, that's not a good business to be in. I would only hope that the Dallas Cowboys did their homework and they did all the research they do. And you would have to assume they did because otherwise you just don't do it. You know, um, even with Kelvin Joseph as high as, as high as they drafted him in the second round, you know what I mean? Like with all the red flags, he's a rapper, he's this, he's that, you know, hopefully none of that stuff matters, you know, and hopefully they did enough homework to think that this kid's going to pan out to be one of the deeper players in the league. And, uh, you know, again, sometimes I, I get busted on the Jersey boys podcast all the time for being the over optimistic one. They think I'm since they're older than me and I'm 35 years old that I'm little Sturch and I'm, I'm Mr. Giddy up and I'm Mr. Everybody they draft is the best player they've ever had in their, in the entire franchise. I'm not that way. But when I look at this draft from top to bottom, Outside of yesterday, where it was kind of suspect with a lot of the personnel they decided to go with, I think the Dallas Cowboys had a pretty decent draft. And I'm yes, I'm optimistic that this defense can go from where they were yesterday or last year or even three days ago. You know what I mean? They were not a middle of the pack defense. And that's all you really need in this league, considering how offensively driven it is. You need a middle of the pack defense. I think the players they drafted this year, did it and I, and I think I think they have enough now to work with Dan Quinn has a lot to work with and he might come up to some tough decisions come you know come August September so for everybody that's watching um shout out to all of you here watching on YouTube on Facebook on Twitter make sure you go subscribe to the blog and the boys YouTube channel we've been doing a lot of fun stuff this offseason that's going to continue um so everybody who's watching let's go with your 
your favorite pick that you are surprised, or, or rather, let me rephrase, the pick you are most happily surprised by, the pick that you can't actually believe that you are excited about. Um, for me, I think that that's Quentin Bohana. Like, I, I did not expect to be excited about this. Um, and, and, you know, I, a lot of people, obviously, we, we talked about different defensive tackles. Uh, <laughs> yours, your has been a big Israel Mukwamu fan uh, since the moment the pick was made. Um, a lot of people say Cox. Um, and, and But, like, that is that to me, like, I'm not surprised at myself for liking that pick. Like oh, the, the, the okay. value I was going to say. You, okay. know, you, you know what I'm saying? Like, mm-hmm. so in that sense, like, I am so I'm surprised that I am happy about the Quinton Bohana pick, but I I also am kind of like that I can compartmentalize that in my, like in my own mind and like the own like my own psychology that like the Cowboys finally drafted like a big run stuffing nose tackle and I just I never thought that that was possible honestly like my whole life almost and so I mean they did it um, and now twenty nine O dog brings up Kelvin Joseph and I, I think was that just th- gonna say that but okay, yeah. yeah. That's another great answer because the Cowboys did not land Patrick Sertan or J.C. Horner. We haven't talked about that for a while now, but they did still walk away with a top corner. And now we've got the Kelvin answers following it. Okay, everybody, you've convinced me. I've bailed on my own point. <laughs> my answer is Kelvin Joseph. And he has, you know, the character concerns as well. Um, but if you if you told me that we could have had him and Micah Parsons, I think that that's a win. I, I I really do. I mean, people were so high on like Nick Bolton um, and, and, and JOK, who obviously went later than a lot of people thought he would. But I mean, they walked away with one of the top linebacker, the top linebacker and one of the top corners. Like that's a great combination. Yeah, I would, I would 100% wholeheartedly agree with you after doing, you know, obviously uh, there's a lot better, bigger experts than me when it comes to the NFL draft. But when it comes to my disappointment and my real like just gut wrenching feeling that I had when Carolina and Denver took back to back the guys I coveted hard, you know, round two comes around, you get a Kelvin Joseph and, and I'm like, okay, you know, this doesn't sting as much. Now you have the best linebacker in the country joining your team. And now you have a very, very good Kelvin Joseph cornerback coming in. Who's again, my first, (laughs) my first thing I sent to some of my Eagle fan friends is, Hey, look, look at this. Look, look at this interesting stat. I just saw about Devante Smith and Kelvin Joseph. You know what I mean? So that was one of those things. I was like, I I, I felt good. I felt better. I didn't think I was going to feel that way when they made the pick. I'm sitting there like, Oh, okay. But then like literally within like a half hour of doing my homework, I was like, okay, you know what? Yes. Did I want Sertan? Yes. Would, would, uh, you know, the, yeah, I, I'm drawing a blank. Um, Farley, even Farley, down the route, you know, right. down the road. I was, I was like, all right, maybe we land Farley, and then he goes. So, but, but Kelvin Joseph definitely is the one that that pops out at me and says, like, okay, this this was a good rebound after after taking the best linebacker in the country. It it really worked out well, and I think if you look at this like a sandwich, um, like literally, if you're watching, the the bread is great. Right. Like we really like the bread, bread. Um, but 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 like the bread, this is like some sourdough, you know, like on a hot day, like a cool sourdough bite of bread. Um, And the meat is like because I'm putting the meat under the cheese, like the cheese goes on top of the meat for me. Um, I don't know anybody that put the cheese underneath, but like the cheese is what's weird. Savages out there. (laughs) Right. Like the, the cheese to me is like like the third round picks. And so, like, this is like, like, I want some, I want like a spicier cheese. Like, I want like some pepper jack, some Colby mm-hmm. jack. This is like a, you know, like a provolone. You know what I mean? Like, it's a, it's just like a, a, you know, it's when you read the menu, it's like you're, you're putting provolone on this sandwich. Um, and so, like, that that part of it is is really the only section where I'm a little, not even upset. I'm just curious, and I'm I'm just fascinated and i would like to hear we haven't really heard from dan quay which i think is a a big reason why we have so much like quest so many questions about this um but this this defines what dan quinn wants the dallas cowboys defense to be they just gave him nine players i mean they, they clearly value really tall dbs they clearly value you know presence along the interior i mean and and they i mean again more than anything they value tall dbs that is inescapable at this point yeah, I mean, look, you can't. Uh, you have to get the expectation out of your head, though, that oh, we're going to going to going to have the Legion of Boom. You got you just don't don't put that in your head because you will get let down because that was a freakish defense. What you have here 
is the ingredients, like you were just saying about a sandwich, but if I'm looking at like a bowl of soup, you know, and the stuff you're throwing in the soup, you got the ingredients to make a really good serviceable defense. And I think that he's got it in year one. It's not like he had one year where I said this on plenty of podcasts, that like when Dan Quinn walked into his office, sat down at his chair, the defense got better. That's it. Like without even adding a soul, the defense got better. I think he right away is that commanding of a coordinator where it's going to make it better. What they did was they can they they got all the players that he wanted. They gave him nine of eleven uh, or no, I'm sorry, eight of eleven picks were his. You know what I'm saying? Which is it's insane. And I said that, and a lot of people said that. Let's go defense. Did anybody see eight of eleven picks on defense? I, I mean. I was hoping six five. Oh, I, I really was. Nine, eight. I can't do Matthew there. I said no. Nine, it's fine. I, I, I realized the other guy was a guard, but I, I said to myself, like, would you be happy with six five? I was like, yeah. Look, that's one more player on defense. But we're at eight three. That that's that just shows you the thumbprint that this guy has on this defense already. And you know, I beat the dead horse, but this has the the makeup already with the te- the, the talent they have on the team. You know, whether you, you know, obviously last year was just, it was rough. It was rough, but a lot of it could have been schematic. We're going to find out real quick if it was that. Because look, we, uh, you know, especially the Jersey Boys podcast, you know, Keith and Brett Ernst, myself, we're done chasing coaches out of town. We're done at this point. It's over. We've gotten rid of Marinelli. We've gotten rid of Nolan. Like these guys are all been chased out of town. And there's a lot of guys that are still sticking around, like IE Jalen Smith, you know, that are, that are here through different s- schemes. And just aren't answering the call. So I'm thinking that now it's time to to find out this personnel. If, if it look, if it goes the, the other way and the defense is still just poor and things just don't go well and we're giving up 30 plus points a game, I, I don't know what to do at this point. I but I I truly believe that what he's done in the last three days has made this defense leaps and bounds better without even stepping on the field. Um I know it's very, it's way optimistic, but that's yeah, that's, that's pretty. How I'm, that's how I'm built. <laughs> that's pretty rosy. Um, I'm looking for the comment right now. Um, I've lost it, but um, I believe Marvin Wilson and Ardarius Washington are still both there. Um, and David Medina letting us know that Alaric Jackson is still there. Um, the Dallas and and to David's point here. The Cowboys are never shy about throwing good bonuses at priority free agents, and a lot of, I mean. Luke Gifford is a free agent that's on this team. Uh, Justin March is a free agent that's on this team. Uh, Francis Bernard. I mean, they they love, you know, this side of team building. And so I don't, you know, I, I don't think it's this. This is not over. Um, do, do you think do they you, get more defensive players? Yeah. I mean, I why mean, not? Like You're right. Well, they also, it wasn't there uh, a 90, 80 uh, roster size like they have to worry about that at one point because I, I don't know if they're going to carry 90, you know? So if they don't, then that's a big deal. Yeah. I mean, that is still a gray area as far as the NFL rules are concerned. Right. Um, but for, for everyone that's curious, we're going to hang out here. Uh, start assuming you can, I'll yeah. be here no matter what, uh, while, while the undrafted free agent names come out, we're going to track these for you um, for, for a little while, because it's about to start as soon as the Tampa Bay Buccaneers final pick is in. And, I, I really, really, really do think that they will continue to go after defensive players. Let me ask you this, and I'll ask everybody who's watching: what, who, who are, who are defensive players? And we, obviously, we're not including anybody that's on this list that they drafted. Um, so, who are defensive players on the Dallas Cowboys that you are one hundred percent unwilling to not let be the starter at their particular position? The answer is Demarcus Lawrence and Trayvon Dix, as far as I'm concerned. Those are the only two dudes who you absolutely cannot convince me to get off or get out of their particular spot. I can I can make decisions anywhere else. No, that's that's literally I'm I'm in the same wavelength as you as far as clear cut on the field no matter what is D Law 100% and um and uh who did you just say? Demarcus Lawrence and Trayvon Diggs. That's Trayvon, it. yeah, obviously Trayvon Diggs. If Cheeto was still around, then I'd say maybe yes, Cheeto's on the on the field. Uh, but yeah, no, you're right. I mean, there's there's a lot of competition out there. Um, again, you draft the guys like the that's, way you draft. Sorry, that's that's a better way to phrase this. Um, what position are you not offering any level of competition to? Um, and so I've got some questions about Randy Gregory. I like 
Randy has a spot. I'm, I'm not saying like any everybody oh. else is like not on the roster. I'm talking right. about starting on defense for me. And so like Randy is definitely on my team, but I am not 100% certain and like beyond letting anybody else be the starting right defensive end on this team. Yeah, no, it's only D law and it's and it, it literally just uh, to me <sighs> Trayvon Diggs, yes, I love him, but you would hope that, you know, he makes a big, big leap in year two. He had a great year one uh, outside the injury. He even played better when he came back from the injury. You know what I mean? So he's definitely on the on the right side of, uh, of trending in the right direction. But that's it. Everybody else, there is an absolute competition. And there's guys on this team that I personally love that I, I'm going to have to make peace with the fact that they might not see the field as much. Donovan Wilson is one of them. There's I a lot of comments here. Like, I, and Yeah, I, I love Donovan Wilson. As much as I love Donovan Wilson, he's an Aggie. I'm an Aggie. I mean, and so as much as I love him, I, I, you cannot, I don't think anybody, any Cowboys fan could say with a straight face, he is undeniably. No. A, and, and if he is, it's only as a result of the quality of players around him. It, it isn't anything of his own accord like it is with Demarcus Lawrence with Trayvon Diggs. Now, here's the thing. Now, you, you said before Demarcus Lawrence and Trayvon Diggs, and that's that's I wholeheartedly agree with you, but don't you think it's kind of crazy that, that those are the two guys that we both agree with, but there's a guy out there making a ton of money that we just say he's not a guarantee. That's insane to me. That's the part that I really uh, traps me more than anything else. All yeah. that money you gave Jalen Smith, and you're telling me that Micah Parsons, Keanu Neal, regardless of his position, and Jabril Cox, and just everything that they've done in this draft alone doesn't guarantee Jalen Smith a starting position in 2021. That is absolutely nuts. It is, and I'm not saying you're harping, but that's like we knew that. You know what I mean? No, like, I know. We, it's, like, just, like, it's insane. It's well, like, it's it's fi from the financial standpoint I'm saying right but it's their it's their mistake like they right. made the bed they laid in it and then they like bragged about it right they're like look at the bed I'm laying in it's like we know <laughs> this is a bad idea um and we're aware I mean so yeah but we we have no and that like that's like to your point I mean Jalen was the one who found it preposterous that you know he was asked if he would be on the team in 2021 and like boom hello Micah Parsons hello Jabril Cox I mean the Cowboys are very clearly committed to competition which has not like that's what I'm saying like they, they have catered to certain players everywhere like uh, at a lot of different positions I mean we're, we're talking about a team that two years ago let J Jason Witten walk back in after a year of retirement and completely have his job back without any semblance of competition True. and so that that does feel like that particular quality is dissipating, which is a good thing. Yeah, no, and that's that's what I'm saying. Like the fact that we only have two is it's a little crazy, but it's a good crazy that just goes to show you that you know competition is going to create a lot of of better players, and, and we'll be better for it in the in the long run. Um, so let's see here as the draft winds down. Um, what questions do you have if you're watching with us? What questions do you have about the roster? We've established players who want the Cowboys to go after right now. We know Marvin Wilson. We know Dylan Moses. We certainly know our Darius Washington. For what it's worth, Paris Ford, True Williams, still both available as well. Uh, it's going to happen very fast, and we will have an article available at blogontheboys.com that has all these names. If you want to check it out later, we will be tracking it for you all day long. But what other questions do we have that we have to ultimately find the answers to in these final moments before the undrafted free agency period starts. Uh, Abu says, who's our sleeper pick? I think of the, of the class. Um, I mean, I don't know. I mean, sleeper, I guess that's, that's like a pet cat. I think yeah, I don't know. Uh, I'll, I'll say Chauncey Golston. I'll feel I just to combat what you said earlier. I mean, <laughs> maybe, maybe that's it. Like, I mean, cause there is a question right. on, on the other end spot. I mean, that's, that's possible. Yeah. I mean, sleeper, I def Sleeper is a guy that you really can't say that because you don't know what any of these guys are going to do. But I guess uh, your sleeper pick would be, I, I don't know. Let's see what, Fah you know, Fahoko can do. Who knows? You know, like that, that could be a very sneaky good thing. And then next year when we're all saying do this, do that with Gallup or, you know, cut Cooper. I don't know. There's a million things you can do, but who knows if he has a productive first year and he builds a nice rapport with Dak. You know, I know we've talked literally no offense this entire thing, which is insane to me considering how much this, this team is built on the offensive side of the ball, but maybe there's a competition there. He could be the sleeper. Two questions here. Uh, Derek asks backup quarterback, still a bit uh, of a mystery. Gilbert. I think it's, it's easily Derek Gilbert. Um, yeah. 
no disrespect to the nooch, but I mean, it really is. Um, this has been a popular theme all day, Sturge. Um, how likely do you see Richard Sherman or any significant free agent signing? So if we are to qualify Israel Mukuamo as a hybrid, um, the Cowboys walked away with three corners. There are two and a half. Fine, if you qualify as a, him as a hybrid. Um I, I actually don't think it's all that likely now, just because of the number of bodies they have. Yeah, I, I don't. I don't foresee. Uh, I don't foresee them making a move. Is it? Is it nice and flashy on the on the on the uh, you know on the which I'm called? Uh, oh goodness, Chris, sorry, I, I didn't even no, realize that. Okay. <laughs> my bad. I was like, man, I don't look as good today. I, I get my it. Bad. But uh, no, what I'm thinking is is in that regard, yes, it's a flashy pick. Yes, you know. I, would Richard Sherman help this defense? hundred percent, it would. You know, I, I think wholeheartedly it would. It would immediately because, again, younger guys are unknown. Richard Sherman is known, so you you know you take the known over the unknown. But I think based off of what we just saw Quinn do in the draft, I don't I don't foresee that happening. Who is a candidate? Um, or, or rather, this is the question. This is my question? Is there anybody you want to trade away from the Cowboys now? I feel like if they wanted to trade. I've, I've been talking about trading Michael Gallup for a long time, and I certainly said that they should do it if they drafted Kyle Pitts. That didn't happen. If they wanted to trade Anthony Brown, I'm okay with that at this point. You know, they have a lot of, you know, yeah, they have a lot of bodies. Just, yeah, based off of what they just did, I mean, <laughs> now we're sitting around saying, oh, I got too many corners. You know, yesterday we had none. But uh, what I'm thinking is, yeah, Anthony Brown's one of the names that drink. I do not at all want to see Gallup moved. I don't. I think he's finally on the cusp of really big things and he's going to have a Dak for a full year again. I, I I love Gallup. I really do. I'm a big fan of Michael Gallup. And I think that at the end of this year, you know, a bold prediction, have you, you know, CD lamb is wide receiver one and, and they can possibly move on from Coop. I, I, I love Cooper, but you know, there's been games where we're like, where's Coop? You know what I mean? Like Gallup is one of those guys that there's going to be a splash play a little bit in each game. So that could be wide receiver two right there. So it's interesting. We'll see. Bobby twenty one thirty one saying what we all think is the head scratcher, uh, Nishan right? Yeah, like hundred percent. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yesterday uh, when I heard like, oh, his brother was on Lance Chan, I'm like, okay, <laughs> like why, why? Okay, great. You know. Um, yeah, I mean that one's hard to square um, mentally, but that's that's like, I mean, KT said it when he was on with us earlier in the fourth round. Like that's a Dan Quinn pick. That's a you know, Dan, you get to come into the store. You get to pick anything you want. You get to, like when uh, you have a little girl stretch, it's like yeah. you get to you get to dress yourself today. And she wears like <laughs> rain boots and stuff like, you know, like that's I've, kind of I've, what that I've already let her pick out her own thing. It's interesting. <laughs> um, yeah, that is definitely uh, the the most difficult pick uh, to understand. Um, but I mean, OK, we've got the final pick here, by the way, the is Tampa Bay Buccaneers, uh, the 259th overall selection. Um, the pick is in NFL networks, building up a lot of drama, obviously. Um, so I don't know what that is going to be quite yet. Uh, it is guard Grant Stewart. Um, so yeah, so all the elite teams apparently take a guard with their last pick. See, <laughs> so that's, that's the foregone conclusion. If we did the same thing, the champs did, I mean, come on, crown us now. That's a good point. Um, wow. So, okay, everybody, the 2021 NFL draft is officially over. There, this was pretty certain, but we now know for show. This is the 2021 Dallas Cowboys draft class. Your grades, A, A plus, A minus, B, B plus, B minus. Go ahead and go. Stretch, I'll give you the floor to offer your grade first. Uh, on the entire draft itself? The whole draft. Dallas Cowboys draft class. This is the 2021 Dallas Cowboys draft class. Going into today, they were hovering in the C- minus level. But after today, I'm I'm up in the B-plus range. I'll, I'll go B-plus. B-plus. Um, okay, let's see. We've got some comments rolling in. Lynn Clifford Snell says B-minus. Uh, James in Florida, if you want to head down to the FL, Sturge says B-plus There you go, well. James. Thanks, oh, buddy. Odessa B, Ghost Fan B. Uh, we've got a B minus. Uh, let's see here. Akame says A. Uh, we've got a lot of Bs, a lot of Bs, a lot of Bs. Um, I mean, you know, Dallas Martin, I just lost it, uh, says sticking with a B. Um, if anybody cares for about my opinion, I I will go B plus. Um, there you go. I will go B plus because they got sniped twice with Trayvon Morig and obviously with the two corners in the first round. And if you're getting sniped, it by definition cannot be an A because you're losing that on players that you want. Mm -hmm. And so I, I think that they recovered very nicely. I think they have some questions that I would like to hear answers um, about. Um, but 
the undrafted free agent class is going to go a long way at determining. Uh, welcome, everybody who has joined us late. The NFL draft has come to a close. It is now time to track all of the undrafted free agents that the Dallas Cowboys are going to sign. We do have a tracker available for you. Shout out to our incredible producer, Charlotte Cushing, doing an amazing job. Um, this will help. This won't. This isn't part of the draft class, but this will certainly help how we feel, I think, about the overall situation. The consensus, based on all the comments, really is a B. Uh, we've got some B minuses, B pluses, but to come away with a B, I mean, when you had to, you know, when you had to backtrack a little bit, certainly on night one, I think is is an impressive job. It, it's not like, hey, here's a gigantic attaboy, but it is a very nice job done uh, over the course of three days. It's one of those drafts where you're not overly, overly excited, but you're like, OK, they did. They, OK, you know, like they did what they had to do. They came out. They had goals to get defensive talent on this team. They did that. I think they accomplished those goals again yesterday. I went to sleep last night, not in the greatest mood. You know what I mean? I was like, this is, oh boy, what's next? You know, like, they need to rebound and rebound fast. And they did that fast. Uh, their their first pick of today uh, being Jabril Cox. I was like, okay, let's, let's go, you know, let's, let's go. And, and I think they did that. They addressed everything they needed to address everybody, uh, at least on my, in my, uh, in my party over here with Jersey boys, I think we were very, very defense, defense, defense heavy. Um, and, and they, they addressed it. So now it's interesting to see how many of these, uh, undrafted free agents, uh, that they, they make a play for. Obviously I look at this list and I, you know, Washington jumps out at me, Dylan Moses. If they go out and sign more linebackers, man, I just, I, if that's the, again, I could say until I'm blue in the face, Oh, wake up Jalen. You know, it doesn't matter at this point, but I think, competition will be incredible um i'm surprised i see notable undrafted free agents not one quarterback so if it's not you know if it's not who we have on our roster is there no more projects is there mike mccarthy's a quarterback guy and you would think Dak, yes obviously is your guy but like to be careful you have to be careful on the back the back end of that and your your backup quarterback yes serviceable almost beat pittsburgh last year we all we all were there um but the Danucci thing again you could put Tony Romo in that situation and he probably would have really struggled. You know what I mean? So I don't, I don't blame him. That project to me is not over. He's going to walk into this as, uh, as quarterback three, but let's get a QB four in there. You know, let, let's see what we can find out there in uh undrafted free agency land. I'm okay with a QB without a QB four. I really okay. don't need one. I mean, like, like being honest, um, because I want Ben DiNucci to get, Every snap possible. Oh, right, I'm a ready. fan. You I'm a fan I mean? of Danucci. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. I'm a fan of his. I just think uh, you know he needs to also not know that. Hey, by the way, QB three is yours. You All know, right. Think- we uh, we do start to have one update. The Cleveland Browns are signing Marvin Wilson, so he is gone. Marvin Wilson off the board as a potential free agent for the That's Dallas quick. Cowboys. Um, that is, um, and and reading the tweet here from Tom Pelissero. Um, thirty thousand dollars signing bonus plus one hundred sixty-two thousand dollars in guaranteed base salary. Uh, very clearly uh, focused on landing Marvin Wilson. The Cleveland Browns were to the point that they were willing to pay a whole lot. So, I mean, but the Cowboys did walk away with a couple of defensive tackles. I mean, it's it's hard to be upset about that. But no, one no. of one name off the board. Yeah, I mean, look, I want to be an undrafted free agent. <laughs> that kind of money that he just got in one shot. But uh, I, look, Cleveland. Shout out to Cleveland. They had a phenomenal draft. Like they really did do well. They had they handled their own. But uh, all right, one name off the board. It's very, very this that just goes to show you the draft's been over for literally a hiccup, and, and there's a guy off the board already. So that's that's interesting. Okay, so looking, um, I think my my most pr- my most desired player is probably Ardarius Washington. Yeah, yeah, that's, I'm with you. That's the one I want the most. Um, if you're watching live, what player do you want the most? Uh, what undrafted free agent? Uh, because there are a number um, of available ones. Obviously, let's get the list back up here for you uh, in terms of our notable ones. Sturch, the one you want the most that isn't our Darius Washington. Mm, uh, looking back, Dylan Moses. Make that linebacker room just a little bit extra. Uh, I'm with Dylan Moses on that one. As far as this list is concerned, I'd say adding another linebacker just makes things more fun. Um, Michigan State corner um let's see i just lost this tweet michigan state corner shakur brown is signing with the steelers we don't care uh we want to know what the cowboys are doing um let's see here what who does everybody else want uh trey smith brandon lambert trey smith is a kansas city chief dylan moses is the most popular answer no shocker there um let's see here Uh, a lot of people 
uh, our big fans of uh, Snowden, Charles Snowden, the linebacker. That would hey, if you can't walk, if you can walk away with one of the linebackers here, uh, that would be great. They are. I don't know how how are you how do they not have homes already? I mean, it's you know, it's been thirty seconds. I don't know how this <laughs> uh, is in a situation, uh, but it's worth mentioning the Cowboys you know, have a history like we've talked about several times of landing great unjected free agents and turning them into really legitimate players. Um, I don't know, but let's like arbitrary. Undre- let's, let's call it Dylan Moses. Does he make the roster? Probably not. I mean, it's a, like I said, it makes things interesting. It gives, again, I, I can't say it enough. Like competition is great to have. I don't see him. Look, we were, we, there was one guy, commented before can you make all four work and you're like no <laughs> you know so you can make five six seven work probably not so I, I don't see i don't foresee that happening uh are darius washington does he make the roster if he chooses the count that that's a possibility i think that i think that's a very good possibility considering the fact that we have a couple hybrids and you know the the neil thing is just like kind of all over the place project wise and yes i love donovan wilson but again Darius Washington definitely a name to watch uh, as far as uh, as far as you know not only if he does come to Dallas that he can kind of get in there and and really make some noise. It's the Cowboys still are yet to get onto the board. They'll, their overall undrafted free agent class will be large. Uh, it will be a tough road for a lot of people. Um, I mean, Jimmy Robinson is a let's see, James is a fan of Jimmy Robinson. Um, and again, we've already we've already mentioned uh, Marvin Wilson is headed to the Cleveland Browns. Um, okay, we've got that. We've got Raiders, that. Raiders, Darius Stills. Uh, uh, the defense, Dallas, defense the Dallas team. Cowboys are on the board. They have signed running back Brendan Knox. So the first running back added to the team. Oh um, your thoughts, Sturch, on a new running back for the Dallas Cowboys. Again, Brendan Knox um, coming out of Marshall, joining his tackle, Josh Ball, with the Dallas Cowboys. Um, last season in 2020, off 185 carries, 887 yards, nine touchdowns. Um, did not have any fumbles. Didn't have any fumbles his whole career. 4.8 yards per carry this last year. In fact, his yards per carry decreased each season um, at Marshall in 2018, 6.1 in 2019 when he had the highest volume of carries, uh, 5.1, and then last season 4.8. So um, you know, uh, six foot, 223 pounds. I guess. I uh, mean, listen. I, again, these are these are ones that are very inexpensive, and then, again, this running back could wind up being a serviceable special teams guy on the practice field. You know what I mean? Like these are the kinds of picks that, like, yes. Can some of them turn out to be really good? Sure. But like, again, these are all, I'm not going to say there's a reason they weren't drafted. You know what I mean? Cause I can't say that Tony Romo wasn't drafted. You know what I mean? So there's definitely, there's definitely exceptions to the rule adding a running back to the running back room. I don't hate it. Um, so apparently our Darius Washington, I'm looking for this tweet, just tweeted bet. Um, and Trey Smith tweeted, we'll never forget. We wanted you Trey. We tried, we tried really hard. Um, Looking, looking, looking to see uh, what else yet. the Dallas Cowboys have done. But again, they do have a running back, um, a nice, nice camp body, um, nice, mm-hmm. you know, nice player. The Cowboys, again, I mean, I mean, they, they really they've carried two running backs for almost every year over the last like five years. Um, but uh, they are on the board nonetheless with an undrafted free agent. What what positions do we even want? I mean, they're going to they're going to attack every position here because it is undrafted free agency. But they do have at least one running back right now. Yeah, I mean, as far as positions are concerned, I would say, you know, if you want to throw in an extra couple offensive linemen just for depth purposes and, and just competition purposes, sure. Uh, the defense, again, add 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 to the secondary a little bit more just to, again, just stack up. I could see that for – I could definitely see that coming. Um, but, you know, we'll see. I mean, again, Brandon Knox is the only one right now. Uh, actually, you know what? Expected to join the Cowboys. I got Osiris Mitchell, wide receiver out of Marshall from Patrick No C Walker. So mm-hmm. that's that's credible. Um, well, um, let's see here. Uh wait a minute, wait a minute, wait. I just lost something. Osiris um, Mitchell. Let's see here. Um right, let's see here. The tweet coming from uh Matt Z- uh, Matt Zenitz from uh who covers the SEC. Yes, Mississippi State Osiris Mitchell. 
uh, had 47 catches last season. So the Dallas Cowboys on the board again, another uh, option. Uh, that's a Mississippi State product, obviously. Uh, somebody who Dak Prescott knows well, I would have to imagine, or at least has heard of. Uh, we've got Watson Mata lets us know. Mitchell's a six foot five, which is how I know the Cowboys want him. Yeah, yeah I, I I think that that's clearly a focus, though, um, is, is getting some taller people, both on offense and on defense, uh, you know, for the Cowboys. Um, I'm okay with that. That's okay. You know, Let's you go. gotta bring you gotta bring in some wide receivers at this point. And there's always an undrafted free agent wide receiver that Cowboys fans love. Yeah, no, this could be one of those guys who just come out of left field and like, wow, I can't believe we got him. You know what I mean? That that's definitely yeah, pet cat kind of thing where it's like, oh yeah, you know, he's he's the guy. He's he's your I don't know how to compare him. Uh, you know, I know Rico Gathers was, was a project forever, but you know, something like well, we're excited about it. Let's see what happens. And again, optimistic. Looking around, looking around, the frenzy is off and running. Um, I don't see Florida State wide receiver Tamori and Terry is signing with the Seattle Seahawks. That's the latest one here. Um, we've got uh, we've got a Bears fan in here. Apparently, what's up? Congrats! Uh, I really am pumped about Justin Fields, but you know, hey, let's all be cool. Um, looking, looking, looking here uh, to see what the Cowboys have done. Here we go. Um, I got one. I got one okay, here. what do we got? What do we got? Tyler Cole, linebacker out of Purdue, expected right. to go to the Cowboys. Okay, so the Cowboys have another linebacker, Tyler Cole from Purdue. Uh, we have this is this is what undrafted free agency is like, people. So Tyler Coyle, let's see here. Uh, one second, uh, Coyle, Coyle, yeah. Coyle, Coyle, Tyler yep. Coyle, and Dane. Um, I would imagine has him on his big board. Uh, Tyler Coyle is. Um, no, I don't see him on Dane's board, but I could be missing him. Um, so, okay, that's okay. You know, hey, this is undrafted free agency time, and plus the Cowboys already got the best linebacker in the draft. Uh, anyway, do. in you know, in Micah Parsons. But last season, Tyler Coyle, uh, ten solo tackles. Um, you know, it's it was a, sh a shorter season for him, obviously. Um, but um, you know, it was what it was. Again, this is this is undrafted free agency. You have to temper your expectations. Um, looking for any others um no this is not a, a, a veteran free agent but um ricky prole's son is signing hey. with the minnesota vikings that's kind of cool i like that um let's see uh illinois state safety christian uphoff is signing with the packers so another safety the cowboys didn't get um just it, it just continues i mean <laughs> that's that's how it goes um let's see here um, here's a cool name uh kansas running back puka williams jr signing with the Bengals. <laughs> yeah uh I'm going puka first chubba now puka we've got all sorts of cool names going on um javion hawkins is signing with the falcons um uh looking more um mississippi state safety marcus murphy is headed to the atlanta falcons um so the cowboys still don't have a safety we're still waiting to hear uh marvin wilson for those of you asking wind up with the cleveland browns um but uh we're still waiting to hear on our darius washington that's probably the biggest question mark hovering in the stratosphere right now sturch um go question. ahead go ahead and call just... it does it happen no, I, I feel like if it was going to happen, it would have happened already. No, like, I, I, what am I missing something as far as of why Darius Washington is is still there? Is, is what I'm saying? It's too short. That's that's, the that's a size thing, right? Yeah. So yeah. I think I was like, man, that's kind of stinks to be the reason. You know what I mean? Like, I get it, but again, get him in camp, see what he can do. What's the harm? I mean, the Cowboys value those snaps. They want them somewhere else. I think the Kentucky Derby just started, by the way. It did. Uh, it did. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I mean. Paul Thomas wants you to know too small, bro. I mean, but yeah, I mean, at this, <laughs> at this point, um, uh, what, you know, why not? I mean, and now it's just, now it's just money, right? Like it's who cares? It's just money. Just spend the money. Um, I think that's how we all feel. Uh, yeah, Kevin, when well, especially when it's not ours. <laughs> yeah. Kevin says Washington will prove people wrong. I am waiting to see, um, Nothing yet, but man, this this waiting. I'm going to be so disappointed um, when, man, I'm going to be this like. Some, there are there are certain undrafted free agents that like wind up with other teams. Uh, okay, AJ Parker is headed to the Lions. Um, like when Penny Hart wound up with the Bears. Actually, I know we had a Bears fan in here a minute ago. That just broke my heart um, <laughs> a couple of years ago. But uh, no, uh, looking. Uh, yeah, there's the Puka Williams. Um, mm -hmm. Still waiting. 
Um, Did you say Calvin Bundage to the Steelers? No, I haven't yet, but he's headed to the Steelers. Uh, Let's see. uh, Looking for more. um, Yes. I know. That's I'm reading. Uh, Reading is hard at a certain point. Um, Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Uh, uh, The Dallas Cowboys are landing a TCU product. It is tight end. Artavius Lynn. Uh, so not our Darius. Like this is just trolling now. Uh, the Cowboys are doing. So the Cowboys on the board. Um, okay. So, and according to Michael Gelkin, the Cowboys have agreed to terms with former UConn and Purdue safety, Tyler Coyle. So the Cowboys now have a safety. Tyler Coyle is their undrafted free agent. I'm making sure he is not on um, Dane's board. Uh, Tyler Coyle, Tyler Coyle. I don't see him here on Dane's board. Uh, somebody can correct me if I'm wrong. He might be listed under a corner as well. Uh, we've had that happen tonight. Um, no, but either way, the Cowboys do have a safety now. Tyler Coyle is the – okay. I mean, so that really means that our Darius Washington is not going to happen. Yeah, would, I don't I don't foresee that happening. Now that, now that like, look, if, you, if they were going to come out safety, you would think that it would be our Darius Washington. I, I, again, this is very – it's discouraging because, like – I don't know. You feel like he's he's good enough to at least oh, give it a shot. You know, right. like give it him a shot. I'm sorry. We've we've already got Tyler on here. We've got yeah, yeah, yeah. linebacker. Um, so he is six foot two. That is what I was looking up here uh, for the question. So six foot two. Um, for anyone who's curious, um, but I guess <laughs> it, it depends Joe. how you classify him. Um, you know, Joey I, I Eagles, mean, Joey Eagles. This is not the TCU player people are waiting on. <laughs> I hate that. Yeah. <laughs> um, this is um hey, what what can you do? Um we're we're still waiting. I think when our Darius Washington um no, that's Calvin Bundage. I'm I'm trying to read a thousand things at once. Uh Trayvon Grimes is headed of the Eagles. I don't know if you said that Sturch already. Um no, I did not I did not see that one. Uh man, this I really is Ardarius. that the most? Is that the most unexcited woo I've ever seen out of blogging the voice Twitter right now? <laughs> yeah, I mean we're waiting on woo. the the Ardarius Washington, you know, move. Um, quarterback, quarterback alert: Jamie Newman signing with Philadelphia to give uh, Jalen Hurts a run for his money. <laughs> uh, best quarterback on the roster, clearly, obviously. What what is the out, division rivals aside? Ardarius Washington going where would be the most disappointing? Washington. I, but division rivals aside. Oh, aside. Sorry. Um, I don't know. Uh, I don't know. There's 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 plenty of teams that I just I can't foresee. You know, getting behind. Maybe like a uh, Seattle. Not Seattle. Uh, I don't know. I, I guess him signing outside of the division really wouldn't really. It wouldn't make me too upset. But I guess if I had to put a finger on a team, don't add any more talent. Tampa Bay. I guess. <laughs> um, we enough. Do have a- enough. We do have a question here um, outside of Romo, who has been the Cowboys' best undrafted player. I think there's an argument for Miles Austin. Um, Obviously, Ar- Artavius Lynn, but whatever. <laughs> um, yeah. Um, I mean, there's an argument for Miles Austin. That might be the next best one. I like right? Miles. Lucky the Whitehead. Jersey boy. Jersey boy. Uh, Cole Beasley's in the mix, actually. I mean, Cole Beasley is certainly in the mix um, for. Um, for best ones, um, looking, 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 looking. Um, no, I'm still. I'm waiting on our Darius Washington. I think we're all waiting with bated breath. I, I, I just want to see him go somewhere, just to say, you know, hey, this is gonna be a thing. You know, like, yeah, like okay. just, just end the suspense, right? Um, already. Uh, um. Uh. Nothing. 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 I mean, nothing. how is this possible? Um, the Vic. Oh no, that's uh, Blake Prohl. Um, man, how uh, Mason Stoke is uh, Wisconsin fullback is signing with the Carolina Panthers. Um, still nothing on our Darius Washington. Hope is still alive. Technically, maybe the notion the, the negotiation is happening like right this second. Um, you know, maybe the you Cowboys know. truly are. You know. Trying to convince him, they're trying to sell him. That's you know, that's what's happening right now. I'm a, I'm a little excited now. Sometimes I like to give credit where credits due. Jonah Tolls of uh, looks like the Draft Network in USA Today. He said, "If you told me that the Cowboys drafted Tyler Cole in the late fourth round, he would have been happy." 
So, I mean, he's got apparently raw freak size abilities. An athlete can play either safety spot. So this is a, uh, that could be something that could, um, I mean, fourth round. I mean, <laughs> that's, you know, that, that's basically today at some point today we drafted him. So, I mean, is that a far stretch? Probably not, but, um, a little bit. Um, I, I don't know. I'm, I'm just, where is our Darius Washington? That's, that's really, I think, uh, the Colts are signing Isaiah Kafusi, the linebacker to BYU. Okay, um, where? How is this possible? I mean, that that we're still waiting here. Uh, but the Cowboys have four names on the board. We do have a tracker again available for you at blogontheboys.com. We will continue to update it over the weekend as more names continue to come out. Um, and um, right now, again, we do have four names. Um, so yeah, I mean, oh, uh, Patty Fisher signing with the Panthers. Uh, here we we have another cowboy on the board, Sturge. The Dallas Cowboys uh, have agreed in principle with Marshall. Oh, we, we Marshall running back Brendan Knox. We already had. No, we have that. Yep, we have. Um, okay. Uh, no, this is um, this is uh, Osiris Mitchell. You can't give us the same names over and over again. All right, our eyes are jumping <laughs> to Dallas Cowboys. I haven't refreshed um, this much tw- this Twitter so much since Zeke's contract debate. Uh, that was a long time ago. I um, David saying that Washington is waiting on the biggest signing bonus. I think that's very easily true. Um, uh, Ken also, by the way, Drew Pearson, obviously a great Cliff Harris and Everson. Walls. Oh, wow. Great yeah, suggestions. Walls. Um, but, uh, let's see here. It looks like, uh, the chiefs, uh, brought in some competition for Patrick Mahomes, uh, oh, Shane, cool. Bush- Shane, Bush- Shane, Bushell, Shane, Bushell. Yeah. you know, Hey, it, that's, a, that's a Dallas guy. Um, uh, according to Clarence Hill, uh, I'm looking to find this. I'm looking to find this. Brandon Smith. Uh, Never yeah. Heard. According yeah. to Clarence Hill, the Dallas Cowboys are signing Brandon Smith, wide receiver out of Iowa. Uh, so another wide out for the Dallas Cowboys. Um, okay. Nothing, nothing to write home about. Um, but still an important name to know clearly. Um, lots of practice squad bodies, uh, potentially. So the Dallas Cowboys have a new wide receiver. I haven't seen anything for New York or Washington yet. Nothing. Yeah. That's, I'm actually kind of curious. And when you pulled up the, the list before I'm like, okay, a couple Philly things here and there, but that's really it. Uh, let's see. Uh, Robert offers Tyler Cole basically played ball Hawk linebacker safety on Purdue this year. Intriguing pickup. Yeah. I'm down with this. I mean, yeah. you know, nothing, uh, no, that's Mason Stoke again. Um, how, I mean, seriously, what, Ardarius is just enjoying the moment now. Like he, he, everybody, he had to wait for everybody. Now he's making everybody else wait. Clearly, um, is um, and Jonah just added Sturge. Uh, he said, "I." T- t- he just tweeted ironically. My comparison for Tyler Cole uh, was um, was a raw version of Keanu Neal coming out of Florida. He's that okay. hybrid safety linebacker that DQ loves. To the comment that we just received here. Um, let's see here. Um, let's move. Let's move. Let's move. Uh, all of this is happening very fast. We appreciate everybody uh, working with us as we work our way to our Darius Washington's new home. Our Darius, like, dude, the draft's been over for like half an hour. How do you not, <laughs> you know? Uh, Brett Hegel is uh, headed to the New York Giants. So mm-hmm. we now know that. That is one headed to New York. Um, let's see here. Uh, no, that's Jamie Newman. How, how do we not know yet what is happening? Uh, Sidarius Hutcherson is headed to the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Our Darius is really enjoying this moment, man. He really, really, really is. Um, I don't know if this is going to happen. He's ever, right. I don't, well, I don't know he's, if he's ever going to get this much attention again. <laughs> so. um, no, I saw TCU again. They're just trolling us. Um, man, um, I am. I don't know. I, I don't know where the, la- where the place he could go would be that would upset me the most would be at this point. Um, Eagle, oh, no, that's Eagles. Uh, Antonio Nunn's headed to the Falcons. Um it is time, Ardarius, to find your home. Okay. Cool. Like the we're, happy we're, Gilmore. <laughs> oh, I mean, seriously. Like we're go to your home. <laughs> what, what, like we like because the moment he has a home, the moment we can like start making our mental peace with it. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Uh, and so like we need we need this level of closure if he's not gonna be, you know, a Dallas Cowboy. Right. It's uh Lucas is saying just sign Ardarius. Why well, I, I mean, seriously, like I don't know what is taking so long. Um, but uh no uh charles snowden's still out there too by the way Mm, um okay we've got another one here uh tiffin running back jaquan hardy 
is heading to the Dallas Cowboys. Uh, so Tiffin running backs. That's I'm two sorry. running backs Tiffin? for the Dallas. Tiffin running back Jaquan Hardy. Where is uh, Tiffin? <laughs> uh, getting some information up on him. Tiffin University, the Tiffin Dragons. Oh, um, you're wondering where Tiffin University is. It's in Tiffin, Ohio, by the way, oh, for right. anybody who's curious. Um, it was. <laughs> he, uh, he, let's see, 5'10", 225. Uh, career stats, uh, last season, 11 games, 204 carries, 1,554 yards, 15 touchdowns. Hey, I mean. Ready for this? A little mind-blowing stat? Uh, this is pretty interesting. 2021 uh, quarterback draft just saw 10 quarterbacks selected. Obviously, he lists all the quarterbacks selected. It became just the third quarterback class since 2000 to see 10 or less. 21, the- 21 years worth, and only three have gone 10 or less quarterbacks. It's pretty Man. interesting. Yeah, right? Like um quarterback, bro. <laughs> quarterback. That is um okay. Well, uh Tiffin. still don't know where Tiffin is. <laughs> it's in Tiffin, Ohio. Who's <laughs> please if you're watching live, let let Sturch know what Tiffin, let, Ohio. Let me is. know about them dragons. <laughs> uh yeah. J- James Newton says Zeke better be careful. Oh boy, uh, Zeke. Clearly. I'm still quickly scanning uh to find where our Darius Washington is going. Brandon says, I can't believe our Darius wasn't drafted. You think he'd see our safety situation and a one-year rental in undersized KZ and think this is my best chance. That's a great point. Oh, right. like, you ready? I mean, uh, oh, I you, got one here. Doug, uh, Pe- Doug Peterson's son. The tight is, end? Yeah, he's signed with the Niners. Okay. So Doug Peterson's son wants nothing to do with Doug Peterson's old team. Who can blame him? Um <laughs> Let's see here. We've got questions about Marvin Wilson. He's headed to the Cleveland Browns. Uh, Let's take a look at the Dallas Cowboys Hall so far. Um, Two running backs for the Cowboys. Uh, Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Uh, No, we knew that one. Um, uh, The Washington football team is expected to sign Buffalo running back Jarrett Patterson. Um, I don't think we had said this one out loud yet. Um, So Jarrett Patterson, now a member of the Washington football team, um, it seems. Uh, Orlando says Washington isn't going to Dallas. Give it up. No, what is dead may never die. I am not Um, dying yet. This is Wake Forest uh, receiver Sage Surratt headed to the Lions. Yeah, I mean, I agree with uh, James here. This this clearly means that our Darius Washington is going to be an incredible player. Just the fact that this is that this is literally like weighing on all of our stress levels. Well, again, uh, maybe that the, the guy who commented before, you know, saying like he's waiting for that signing bonus to be, maybe he does have like seven offers that we don't know about, you know, and he's just kind of waiting it out. But uh, yeah, we'll see. Um, No, I'm looking, uh, looking, 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 still nothing. Our Dar- again, I found our Darius Washington's tweet that says bet. How about you just tweet your new place? That would be cool. Um, bet, that's not a good bet. That's all right. Bet. All right. You Nobody took a chance on me. Cool. You know, like, all right. Now you're all in big, big trouble. Like Billy Madison style with the dodgeball. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, yeah. Um, man. Um, I can't believe this is happening. Uh, uh, Charles Snowden is headed to the Bears. So he is no longer an option for the Dallas Cowboys. Um, we're also still waiting to hear on Dylan Moses. So, but Charles Snowden mm. is headed to Chicago. Um, one linebacker option is still available though, Sturge. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I mean, sure. <laughs> if they want to keep going that route and making things interesting, do it. I say, do it. What do you got to lose? I mean, uh, this is so stressful. Oh my uh, God. Uh, Darius Washington, uh, he also, oh no, this was 23 minutes ago, but he put the ZZZ like he was sleeping. Right. Uh, well, he's <laughs> being slept on is clearly his intimation here. I think somebody uh, in our chat, our chat, Zach, uh, I think he went over and said, hey, Dallas Cowboys, sign our boy. He follows me. <laughs> Dallas Martin said, what about Dylan Moses? Again, still out there. Uh, we're so focused on our Darius Washington that, I mean, one of these things has to happen soon. Um yeah, here's another tweet about Charles Snowden headed to the Bears. Um, Dylan Stoner headed to the Raiders. Um, now, now's the time. Oh, I thought that said uh, Dylan Moses. It doesn't. So, um, nope, still nothing. Um, still Crazy. nothing. Uh, let's see here. This is our status so far, though. Whoops. Let's see here. We're fixing that. Um, sometimes we show you how the sausage is made here uh, at Blogging the Boys. It's been 
Um, it's been a long day, obviously, yeah. uh, as we, uh, it's been a long weekend, but this is where things stand at the moment. Uh, we've got a comment. We've got a manifestation. I see Washington going to the charge. It's not going to lie. Maybe, maybe if we just start like saying it's not going to happen, it will start to happen. Um, you know, no, you gotta, you gotta manifest this. He's coming to the Cowboys. It's just a matter of timing. Um, it's been a long time. Safety, uh, actually, safety. De uh, Devin or Devon Key from Western Kentucky signs with the Chiefs. Right. Um, so that's one. Thomas Schaefer is headed to the Bears. Um, so still lots of good players available for the Cowboys to pick from uh, in free agency. They have five players on the board. No, nothing new yet. Gosh, Lee, goodness gracious. Um, what do we got here? Uh, Orlando says Washington's going to the Canadian League, bro. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, they really do hate safeties. Like, we, we've we known this for a long time. Um, and I agree with 29 O Dog that Dan Quinn, we've learned, clearly covets tall players, and he's not that. But still, until he's gone, this is, you know, um, oh, Joe John says uh, we should at our Darius Washington. I, I've lost it. Search if you can find his Twitter handle, because maybe that's what it is. Maybe we just need somebody to tweet at him and say, pick the Cowboys. Like, maybe that's maybe that's what he's waiting on. Um, honestly, um, yeah, we'll see that could up. be it. Uh, what is his Twitter handle? It um, is uh, AD underscore Washington 24. Texas A&M linebacker Anthony Hines the third is headed to the Dallas Cowboys. Um, so the Cowboys do have another linebacker. It is not Dylan Moses for what it's worth. Um, David Moore, who many people have been talking about for a long time. Oh, we have some updates here. David Moore is signing with the Carolina Panthers. Dylan Moses is signing with the Jacksonville Jaguars. So he is gone. The Cowboys chose the Aggie oh, over just, Dylan Moses or, he's or outfit. Moses is going to start on the uh, non-football injury list. So that's what um, here. Brandon Lambert says everybody go tweet to Washington right now to join the Cowboys. If we can make a move ourselves, like if we can, um, if we could be the people. I'm manifesting um, this. There's yeah, there's this Twitter. I already said come to Dallas. That's it. Uh, I, said, choose, <laughs> I said choose Dallas. Thanks. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I mean, just make it nice and simple. Yeah, uh, that's it. really um, nice. And but easy. I think um, still we're still waiting on our Darius Washington. Um, let's see here. We've got uh, – we're updating everything as things go. Mon uh, our nearest Washington should be one of the biggest steals. If he, I mean, yeah. Uh, Monica <laughs> says, uh, get Washington. I agree. Um, oh, Lynn Clifford Snell noting that Dylan Moses might have been recruited by Urban Myers. That does make sense a little bit. Uh, no, yeah, that does. Um, uh, Sam Kamara is headed to the Bears. Um, Adam Schefter – Dylan Moses – is at the level where Adam Schefter is tweeting where he's ending up. So, I mean, let's, you know, let's acknowledge this. Uh, still nothing um, on. Oh, wait. Uh, no, that's nothing. Um, I just I saw the word Tiffin again. <laughs> like, it's amazing. Um, you know, Tiffin is trending. The, uh, oh, we already talked about. Um, Let's see. Octagon Football has tweeted that Brandon Smith out of Iowa, wide receiver. Do we have this on the board? I don't think we have it. We've discussed this yet. Brandon Smith, wide receiver out of Iowa, is signing with the Cowboys. So we have that as well. Another wide receiver. Um, looking. No. Well, I will say um, Ardarius is enjoying his moment. Um He's he's really enjoying his moment and good for him. He had to wait a long time. I just uh, I just looked at my phone and I could have sworn I just saw my last tweet and I I but I was also looking at followers and I thought it said how oh, Darius Washington followed me. I was like, all right, everybody, what the hell is going on here? <laughs> uh, Lorenzo Burns uh, out of Arizona is staying there, uh, headed to the Cardinals. Iowa defensive tackle Jack Heflin is heading to the Green Bay Packers. Um, you know. The draft has been over for quite some time. I'm I'm very surprised. Very very surprised. Um, let's see here. Let's see. Let's see. He has to um, have offers. I, yeah, I have to assume that he has offers, and he's just weighing his options right now. David, bringing this up, I also believe Alaric Jackson is available as well. Uh, no, that's about Dylan Moses. Um, golly, um, Garrett Grosh from Wisconsin is headed to the Raiders. Um, 
where oh david lawrence is marvin Wilson. oh we got another we got another linebacker i don't know if we did we announce anthony hines yeah we did from texas okay. a&m sorry i've just been refreshing a million times um we're all just living in purgatory right now that's really what's happening <laughs> Seriously. um this is uh this is what, what is the show uh with um with uh what is the show the good place uh what is the the main actress's name i'm blanking on this but um, i'm not a fan okay uh what is uh no text okay. Kristen belk according to charlotte Kristen bell that the Kristen bell it is Kristen <laughs> bell thank you yeah that's the that's what clutch, I was thinking of. clutch. <laughs> um okay let's get our tracker up here um no, that's not. I thought that was something here. Um, that is our uh, our. Okay, so the Cowboys so far undrafted free agents: Brendan Knox, Osiris Mitchell, Tyler Coyle, the linebacker safety hybrid, Artavius Lynn, the tight end of the TCU, Jaquan Hardy, Anthony Hines, a third linebacker out of Texas A and M, and Brandon Smith, wide receiver out of Iowa. Uh, the Philadelphia Eagles have a couple of new players: a brand new wide receiver, a brand new quarterback that are already better than Devontae Smith and Jalen Hurts. Mm-hmm. Um, are Darius Washington still available? Um, Jimmy Robinson still available? You want to? Uh, you want uh, uh, Josh? What is that name underneath uh, Darius? On a well, how do you say the last name? Josh Emmett, Emmett or BB? Ooh, I like it. <laughs> uh, yeah, sometimes you just gotta go and just you know just <laughs> just dive into it. Hey, there's a fullback sighting uh, from LSU. Troy Carter signing with the Titans. I haven't seen the word fullback in a long time. Shout out to Jacob Hester, the OG. Um, let's see. Uh, Joe John tweeted Washington that Washington our Darius Washington tweeted, time will tell a couple of days ago. That's the mentality. Um, well, we're waiting on time. That's yeah. I was going to say, how much time do you have? <laughs> I'm like, come on. I mean, yeah, we uh, we really, really, really need the time. Uh, no. Um, oh, we already knew about Artavius Lynn. We're waiting. All right, this is if you're joining us now. These are the undrafted free agents the Cowboys have taken. Uh, I think we're still getting questions about Trey Smith. We've talked about this. We, you know, mourned when it happened. Uh, the Kansas City Chiefs drafted him. Max Richardson, the BC linebacker, is signing with the Raiders, according to NFL Network's Tom Pelissero. Um, the the madness is is happening. I mean, we have so, seven players. I mean, on the Cowboys so far, and none of them are Darius Washington. How is that a thing? I mean, how how could we possibly be in this place? I mean, it's just. I don't know. This is this is like, I don't know, man. Uh, hard to see. Hard to see. You know what? Being that it's this late, and Lynn, it's- Lynn told all of everybody relax because Lynn tweeted. Oh, thanks, Lynn. See, I mean, now it's a done deal. Right. I mean, really, uh, really making, you know, a difference here. Lynn is, uh, no, sorry. Uh, that's nothing. Uh, I don't know. I have no idea. If you're watching us live right now, we appreciate all of you. Love all of you. Just just go ahead and, and predict it. Where does our Darius Washington go? Let's, let's predict since we have the time, where does he go? I'm just going to say Indianapolis. I'm going to say Matt Eberflus takes him. I'm going to say New Orleans. Why? I had a reason. What's your oh, reason? I, I don't have a reason. I'm throwing it out there. Like, there's just like, at this point, come on. Like, this uh, is. Sorry. Um, the Rams are hoping to bring in Alaric Jackson. Uh, apparently, they have a handshake agreement. So, Alaric off the board. Um, Alabama tight end Miller Forrestall is headed where? Uh, I lost this a moment ago uh, to the Titans. Titans. Titans yeah. yeah. Okay, uh, we've got our predictions for where our Darius Washington ends up with Tim. You know, let's let's do this. Um, there you go, Tim. That's, 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 uh, that's let's see here. Uh, Jamie said, or Jaime said, excuse me. Uh, I don't want this, but the Eagles. Um, Jim asks, uh, yes, yeah, Dylan Moses went to the Jacksonville Jaguars. Uh, James says the Patriots. Um, mm, nope, this is not. Uh, let's. Justin Hillard is signing with the 49ers. Um, how how do we not have this how 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 is this possible at this point like how how is this literally possible i you know what though and i'm not mr like dabby downer or anything like that but if it didn't happen yet i don't i don't see it happening i mean it's just at this point you know it's if it was going to happen i think it would have been before everybody else you know a really I mean? negative mindset search hey listen don't I, it. I don't dude if you're t- you're talking to the wrong guy when it comes to that man i'm telling you right now there's i'm optimistic about pretty much everything 
and the fact that it's not happening yet. And I'm a, just imagine being a Darius Washington right now and just getting a flood of blogging the boys, listeners and, and viewers just <laughs> tweeting at you. Please, please, please. <laughs> I mean, Lynn told us that he You're, tweeted at this him. is true. I, uh, I believe in Lynn and her, and his. I know, her, I, her I know Lynn and his brother and they are difference makers. Um, but we need this to happen. We need this for closure. That's what we really, 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 really need here. Um, <laughs> Kevin with a great question. Who is the tallest corner left undrafted? That's probably uh, the direction the Cowboys are going to go. But they don't have a corner yet uh, that they've added in, in free agency. Um, nope, I don't see it. Man, this is... This is a bummer. I'm not. I'm actually not bummed at all. Then I say this is enticing. Pro, look at that name, tight end TCU tight end Pro Wells signing with the Bengals. That's a great name. My um, name, like my name is Pro. Like how? Wow. Yeah. Um. I mean, like the the puns write oh, themselves. It's, oh, it's gonna be amazing. But like, is his is like that what he's like known by? Uh, Lucas said, "I just tweeted at Ardarius Washington." Thank you, Lucas. Uh, Thanks, seriously, Luke. if you haven't tweeted at Ardarius Washington, like, do you even like the Cowboys? You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> uh, but that's that's the thing. Um, th thank you uh, to our wonderful producer Charlotte. That is Ardarius Washington's Twitter account, and if he signs with the Cowboys, we are going to take full, full, absolute credit um, because we are making this happen. Everybody tweet at our Darius Washington. Let me send a tweet um, uh, from the blog and the boys account because there you go. That'll get I mean, attention. We really, you know, let's make this happen. Uh, so as I as I switch screens for a second here, um, and now uh, that's Avery Williams. Um, <laughs> <laughs> that's, uh, this is I. I really feel like we're being trolled. I. I just you know, when is this going to happen? Let it just let it happen. Uh, oh, Ghost Fan, are you serious? Ghost Fan said that Ardarius just blocked me. What? Um, <laughs> that that oh can't be real. Uh, that you can't be serious that he just blocked you on Twitter. Um, he didn't block me yet, so maybe he's just selecting people. I don't know. Um, he doesn't have a lot of big, he doesn't have a big following. I, I mean, I know I don't, but he doesn't have more than 3,000. He signs with Dallas, his followers will go through the roof. Yeah. I mean, have you seen what happened to, you know, uh, you know, Nashawn Wright. I mean, let's go. That's the life that can be yours, our Darius Washington. Right. Um, let's see. Uh, Jaime says, I'm sure our Darius is reading so. every single comment before me. I totally believe this. Uh, he's absolutely making if I was him, I'd be like, I would have created myself in Madden and then like looked at myself in different <laughs> uniforms. Um, and, and kind of like examined. maybe that's what he's doing. Maybe that's the holdup. <laughs> that's that's yeah. a good point. Like maybe he's in like maybe his uh no gosh, I got the Artavius Lynn thing again. Um Man, uh, what? How could this be? Oh, Jim went full negative, or he's not getting offers. Like that, that, that's the other side of this. Oh, like okay. maybe he's okay, just like Jim, just like waiting for um, the phone to ring. Um, that would not be fun. Uh, obviously, uh, no. Uh, this <laughs> it's simple. It's simple yet effective. Sup? That's it. Uh, that's all yeah, it takes. That's I, it. I, <laughs> uh shout out to Almonte who uh tweeted at Ardarius um and tagged me as well. Appreciate you, Almonte, uh joining us here in the stream. Um no, nothing yet. Nothing yet. Oh, hi, Mr. Maybe he's actually sleeping. Like, you know what I mean? Maybe oh, he's wow. maybe he's truly like asleep. Phone um, on silent, just pissed off, just doesn't want to talk to anybody. Just yeah. Asleep. Or maybe it's like dinner time and it's like a situation like, you know, no, nobody can eat dinner, you know, or and have their phone out type thing. You know what I'm saying? Like, you ever do that? Like, you go to dinner mm -hmm. with friends or whatever. They're like, everybody put your phone to the table and the first person to reach for it has to pay the bill or whatever. Oh, wow. It's a dumb game. Uh, never play, never will. <laughs> uh, we're still waiting on this. How long has it even been? I feel like it's it's been like 40 minutes. Uh, Orlando says he's going to listen or maybe he'll listen. No, there's no maybe here. He's going to listen to us clearly um, right now. Uh, let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Uh, Jacob says, I just tweeted at him begging him to come to Dallas. I'm going to take a look at his Twitter mentions um, just because I really am curious to see what they look like. Uh, How do you do they, that? Am they I are. <laughs> they are all people saying to come to the Cowboys. Congratulations, everybody. Seriously, y'all y'all are doing great work. Hey, look at, there's this person that says, sign with KC. 
get the hell out of here. Like we're, this is our territory. You know what I mean? Like we're the ones doing all this work. Uh, we don't need any chiefs fan coming in. They, you already got Trey Smith. You know what I mean? Mm. Uh, Amen. Abong Bem goodness gracious. I haven't had something to drink in a minute. Uh Og Bon Bemiga is signing with the Los Angeles Chargers. Another uh, tight end, another tight end, Kenny Yaboa over to the Jets. Minnesota is signing Memphis kicker Riley Patterson, Dan Bailey's old job. Uh Dwight just keeping the moonlight. How about them, Cowboys? You know, appreciate it. Uh certainly. Um Scott with a great point here. Are we sure that the Joneses want him? Don't they hate safeties? Like they really that might, you know, like maybe he's called them. Uh, you know what I mean? And um, maybe the Cowboys aren't fielding his call, you know, right. like the call from a Darius watch. Don't, don't answer it. Don't answer it. Um, I mean, um, I, I agree with Gianni here. I can't help but thinking Dan Quinn said he doesn't want a five foot eight safety. Uh, Darius Washington to Jerry Jones. If you want a Baja, come get me. Um, yeah, I mean, do it. Yeah, remember, the last, remember the last safety that said, come get me? That's not happening. <laughs> uh, BJ Emmons is heading to the Seattle Seahawks. Uh, where, <laughs> I um, I think we might live here now. Like, this is just, <laughs> this is just where we live. <laughs> um, this is just where we live. Uh, still, I mean, what is at, – at what point do we give up, you know? Uh, at, at what at one point do we give up? Is it is it just you know is there is there a, a, a give up point uh, where we say you know what enough's enough we've had it we're moving on from our Darius Washington? Yeah. Um, I got. Wait, why is that? Oh, they uh, this guy Almonte. Yeah, he just tweeted at me too. Um, <laughs> He's tweeting everybody. <laughs> yeah, I mean, just that's the thing. Like, just tweet everybody, I guess, in the world. Just um, do it. Uh. Oh, laziest lazy says on Twitter to us. Uh, maybe he has his Twitter mentions off and doesn't see them. Well, I mean, outside of showing up outside our Darius Washington's house in a social distance setting, uh, <laughs> this is all we can do. Right <laughs> way now. to way to put that in there too. I mean, way. you know, we're we're doing knock, what we knock can. on the door, run away. You know, yeah, um, man, uh, Lynn, Lynn with a great point. We've invested too much time. This is how. <laughs> like, I don't. Uh, I used to watch Grey's Anatomy and. Um, it got too much. It got to be too much, like the ridiculousness of the show. But I kept up with it for a long time because I was like, well, I'm pot committed. You know, like I've watched nine seasons of this thing. Like I can't mm. just bail. I ultimately did end up bailing, but still. Uh, let's see here. Jaime says, I physically can't leave until someone picks our Darius. Um, I, sh I empathize. I can't either. <laughs> Uh, Lynn says, I tried to FaceTime him on Instagram, too. He didn't answer. Hey, you know what? That's, Look at that. They're really at least you're doing, doing your job. You are doing um, your due diligence as a Cowboy fan. Um, Syracuse punter Nolan Cooney is heading to the New Orleans Saints. Clearly the news that we've been waiting for for a long time. Um, this is... I don't know. Has anybody checked his Twitter likes? What's the last tweet he liked? That's no, the, that that's wasn't for a couple days ago. Uh, uh, I, I'm looking now. Yeah, one day ago, he liked a tweet from Eric Stokes. Um, so, you know, hey, but we we would have been happy with this pick all day long today, at any point today. So if the Cowboys walk away, actually, let's check this too. Who's the last team or last person he followed? That's that's where um, sometimes, ooh, he last followed Patrick Queen. So maybe Baltimore Ravens are in play. Um, that would suck a lot. Mm -hmm. Um he um he has he's followed Ari Temkin, who used to have a show here, blogging the boys fairly recently. Ari uh hosts the Dallas Cowboys pre and post game show on 105 through the fan. So uh -huh. I mean, you know, this Getting is somewhere. Yeah, I mean, if we're if we're connecting dots, like he's followed people associated with the Dallas Cowboys. Um, I mean, come on, like how? <laughs> I mean, just like I I just need to know. Um, according, let's see here to Justin Wells. We have another Dallas Cowboy. Uh, Justin Wells tweeting right now, right now, right now. The Dallas Cowboys are signing Texas wide receiver Brennan Eagles. So the Dallas Ooh. Cowboys have another wide receiver. We signed an um, Eagle. <laughs> that's right. Uh, it's a good way to put it. Um, <laughs> but uh, uh, I just, I mean, I'm actually impressed at this point. Um, Odessa said, dangerously close to stalking him. What's, what's his favorite color? I mean, yeah. um, you know, 
I, I, I mean, heard it's I, blue, but what kind of blue? What kind of blue are we talking about? Yeah, are we talking it, about New York Giants blue or Dallas blue? There's a difference. Um, I, I mean, I, I'm sort of at a loss for words at this point. Um, I, I believe. I'm, I'm going to come back here. I believe that this is possible that our Darius Washington is going to be a Dallas Cowboy. Now I'm going to like try and speak it into existence and just try to say so it I is happening. Um, it is going to happen in the next six minutes. I'm calling it. It is, five, it is 6.40 p.m. on my computer that I'm staring at. By 6.46, our Darius Washington is going to be a member of the Dallas Cowboys. Uh, FAU edge rusher uh, Leighton McCarthy is headed to the Buccaneers for further updates. But 646, all right, it's happening. 646, mm-hmm. I believe that our Darius Washington will be on the Dallas Cowboys. The Vikings um, signing a receiver with the first name Wop, Wop Filler, receiver uh, Indiana. Jaime yeah. Leal says if they drafted him in the seventh round, we wouldn't be here. Yeah, I know, but the Cowboys had to have a guard, clearly. Um, you know, obviously. Um, here we are. Uh, the Cowboys free agency hall so far. They have three wide receivers. Uh no. Um, but as uh, as Katie Drummond points out, Sturge, your editor over at Cowboys Wire, the Cowboys have a Brendan, a Brandon, and a Brennan. Um <laughs> so um yeah. <laughs> um I feel they, like that's that's definitely supposed to be an RJ tweet like that's that was like taken out of your wheelhouse i feel like dre get some confidence here saying everything we have tried we kind of spoke to brill cox into existence um uh the bears are signing houston baptist linebacker caleb johnson um that's fine uh lamont that's way the first, headed to the first Steelers. nfl signing the first nfl signing in houston baptist football program ever uh that's pretty cool that is pretty um cool. This is going to happen. It's 641. I have five minutes left, um, you know, with my particular time and my demand. Um, It is going to happen by 646 Central Standard Time. Our Darius Washington is going to be a member of the Dallas Cowboys. Uh, No, that's not a tweet about this. This uh, Can you imagine if it actually does at that time? I have imagined it. I have. I have <laughs> I'm I have, just saying. Like, mean? like, like I, <laughs> I have. It is happening. I don't know. Like, I, what are you talking all, about? <laughs> like, it's all, definitely going down. Yeah, the only thing that is in my mind is that this is going to happen by 6:46 p.m. Central Standard Time. We yeah. are 240 seconds away from that moment, and it's going to be a glorious one. Um, I mean, what is what is the deal? Oh. Oh no, we we have already discussed uh, Jaquan Hardy. Okay, yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, what's going on here? You know, we're we're oh, caught Gal- up. Galkin's you know, I mean, usually on top of his stuff. Uh, what is happening um, here? Uh, Odessa is saying to keep hope alive. Oh, I'm I'm going to resuscitate this hope. Um, you know, this is this is we're we're administering CPR into this hope right now. Uh, we have four minutes left still. Um, you know. And uh, Orlando says, if that happens, I need to play the lotto. No, I don't. I don't need to because I know that I'm actually very calm. And you know what? And you know what numbers you play? Six (laughs) forty-six. That's That's a great point. Um, Still waiting here. Um, It might be. uh, I don't know. I mean, look, I'm keeping. Quentin Bohana just had a tweet. Said, "I am a." He was a little bit, a little bit of an expletive there. I am a cowboy. Um, I'll let you. Imagine what it says. It's a family show. Uh, Paris <laughs> Ford, C pools asking about no question, uh, no answer there. Sorry. Um, let's see. Um, nope, still nothing here. Um, I don't know, Sturge. How are you feeling? I'm feeling that you have three minutes left, and um, I'm feeling that 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 look. I'm a big, big believer in whole the whole speaking in into existence thing. Uh, but like in life, this, yeah, yeah. Like in, in not just Cowboys related in life. If you speak it into existence, look, I'm sitting in the comfort and luxury of my own studio. I, I spoke this into existence. These things happen. Uh, but in, in when it comes to a Darius Washington, um, I, I want to say it would have happened already. That's the only thing I'll say. Like if he's as highly touted as he is, on at least on this show, you know, if it's a thing, I, I feel like. It, it would have happened already. He would have been signed before 
you know, Brandon Smith or Brennan <laughs> Eagles or Brandon, not all the bees, you know, like you would have been signed before all these guys. So I, I don't know. That's a great point. Um, wait, former, um, Oh, I thought we had an update there. Uh, former Wake Forest wide receiver Sage Surratt is heading to the Detroit Lions. Um, okay, it, we're coming up on 645, which means we're about to in, enter the final minute countdown. And it's it's going to be, you know, it's it's we might have to call it, but we're going to get to 646 no matter what. Um Oh, uh, Jaime says trying to put this into existence. Jerry's having a deep, intimate conf- a conf- uh, deep, intimate convo with Ardarius Washington right now. Yeah, he's probably talking um, to him about something about his number or somebody that he grew up with the same name, Ardarius, or something mm-hmm. to that effect. Like, oh, my best friend was Ardarius. <laughs> like, right. oh, yeah, great. Um, Come on down. Yeah, Orlando with a great point. TCU guy, so clearly would have, um, you know, been somebody who the Cowboys would have had. Uh, nope, I don't see him here. Um, the Catholic uh, Bell says, what if we sign him in six years? I think that that counts, certainly. Um, oh, yeah, definitely. Yeah, I, I don't see why that wouldn't count. Uh, we are 18 seconds away from 646, so <laughs> starting to get a little nervous myself. Yeah. Um, but it is what it is. Ultimately, the Cowboys, if do you they lo- don't... Do, do you lose all credibility whatsoever if this doesn't happen? <laughs> I don't think so. I don't uh, think so either. I don't think so either. really not my fault. I... <laughs> Certainly did everything. We, we all uh, did our part. We all have cell phones. <laughs> like we all did our part. Yeah. Uh, it is now six forty six. We'll let this minute ride out because if it <laughs> happens at any point in this minute, I think I get the credit for it. Um, but I, for the first time in the last six minutes, I'm kind of doubting this is going to happen. Um, honestly, um, but it's okay. it's okay. You know what? We tried. You know what I mean? Like what? You know what's going to happen, right? What it's going to happen at six forty seven? No, no, no! It's going to happen as soon as you end this broadcast. As like, um, I'm talking, I'm talking moments later. Like that's exactly when it's going to happen. Yeah, and you know what? If if we help contribute to that, then I'm for it. Let's go. Yeah, I'll I'll, I'll, I'll accept that. I'm part uh, of history we have, here. <laughs> we have 15 seconds that are either you know, it's okay. It's it's okay. And you know what? The Dallas Cowboys are apparently getting ready to start their press conference, which that's means it. that they I was just gonna are say, likely yeah. done. Uh, but we are three seconds away to one. I missed, and that's okay. Gil uh, Brandt. Gil Brandt. The Cowboys had an A plus draft. Hey, it is what it is. Uh, Good job, is, Gil. He is Dave Sturchio. You can listen to him on the Jersey Boys podcast every Monday on the Blog and the Boys podcast feed. Sturch, thanks so much for hanging out with us. Absolutely, uh, ball. We really uh, appreciate uh, the fun times. Um, Sturch and the boys will have a lot of thoughts, obviously on what happened um, in the draft on Monday. Make sure to subscribe to the Blog and the Boys Podcast Network, available on all major podcast platforms. Leave a rating, write a review, too. Those things really help. Sturge, peace out, man. Thanks a lot. Have a great rest of your weekend. Thanks so much. Go Cowboys. So uh, Sturge mentioned Gil Brandt's tweet. Let's go ahead and get that up here for you. He said the Cowboys had an A-plus draft. I mean, who's disagreeing with Gil Brandt? Honestly, like who's going to disagree with Gil Brandt? So, uh Thanks a lot to Gil Brandt for letting us know that the Cowboys obviously had a great draft. Okay, guys, uh, as I take my headphones off for the final time, uh, I saw somebody ask about a live show. We will not be having another live show over the course. Uh, by the way, David Moore, uh, the Grambling State Guard, is signing with the Carolina Panthers. Uh, but we won't be having any more live shows over the course of this weekend. We have had seven live shows. We have had a live show for every single round. We've had recaps. We will have a draft recap tomorrow as well, recapping everything that happened on day three. So make sure you check out the Blog and the Boys YouTube channel. Go subscribe over there. Head over to the Blog and the Boys YouTube channel. Subscribe because we do stuff like this all the time. Obviously, this weekend was intense because it's the NFL draft, but we we do this all the time. This is literally our job. Our job is to make sure that you are well-educated and well-informed and hopefully entertained all matters when it comes to the Dallas Cowboys. And so uh, on behalf of everybody at Blog and the Boys, just want to thank everybody for taking the time to join us, whether you watched live, whether you uh, checked out bloggingtheboys.com, whether you listened on a podcast, whatever the case may be, whether you hung out with us every single night on our YouTube stream, on our Facebook stream, on our Twitter stream. Uh, it really was just an incredible amount of fun, and we have had such a great time. Uh, make sure to stay tuned to bloggingtheboys.com. We'll keep the tracker updated for you. The NFL draft is officially over the Dallas Cowboys are going to win the Super Bowl. It's going to be a lot of fun. I'm RJ Ochoa. You can follow me on Twitter or Instagram at RJ Ochoa, and you can do me a favor and have the absolute best day of all time. You know why? Because you deserve it. We'll see you next time.